Okay. Um, are you familiar with a company called HealthSmart? Yes. And who, who is HealthSmart or what is it? Are they a plaintiff in this lawsuit? No, sir, they're not. No, or are they a defendant, sir? Then I think you should ask HealthSmart. No, sir, I'm asking you, sir. I, I can't tell you, I don't. Are you refusing to answer that no, question? No, I'm not refusing to answer. I don't think it's relevant. Then you're refusing to answer that question? No, you're, at, you're saying I'm refusing to answer. I'm telling you, uh, I know what helps me. It's an insurance agency. It does business with the city of Bronzeville, or did until Sias and Cortez canceled their contract. So you are familiar with HealthSmart? Absolutely. It's been all over. You're familiar with it. It's all over the newspaper. I'm not here to answer the questions, no. Mr. Gindani. You are, sir. You're, you're asking a facetious question. It's been all over the blogs. It's been all over the news. It's been on... Brownsville Herald, it's part of the, uh, the lawsuit that uh, Hector Gonzalez, it's all over the news. Everybody knows who Health Smart is. It's facetious and the question is insulting. Well, whether it's in insulting or facetious, sir, I'm asking you to give me as much information or all the information you know about Health Smart. I've given you the information. That's all you know about Health Smart? That's all I can tell you that I know about Health Smart. Okay. Were they involved in, in Lubbock? in any way in the um, um, providing any type of services to either the city or the county in Lubbock, Texas? I don't know. Okay. Has HealthSmart or Ted Parker in any way made any kind of financial contributions to Acción América or to any other DBA that you hold? Uh, pardon? Repeat Has that. Ted Parker or HealthSmart made any financial contributions or in-kind contributions, let me finish, sir, mm -hmm. to any DBA that you hold or to you yourself? I, I can't answer that. Why is I, that I don't have any information. That, I don't handle that. Who handles it, sir? I, I, I don't know. Action America receives contributions individuals, as I explained to you. You obviously are asking me if we receive uh, information from financial support from HealthSmart. We receive financial support from many people. But yet you report that financial support in your tax returns, do you not? That's correct. How do you report it if you don't know where it's coming from and who's giving you'll it see, to you? You'll have a copy of my tax report. You can look at it and then you can determine who supports us. Okay, and so I'm asking you now, does HealthSmart or has HealthSmart and or Ted Parker ever giving you any kind of financial contribution or in-kind contribution, sir? I think that's irrelevant. I don't think if he's a plaintiff, if he's a... Uh, participant, uh, I think that question is irrelevant. It's, Are you refusing uh, to answer the question? I'm not going to resp I'm not going to answer that question because I think it's okay. irrelevant. I, I will take your answer as a refusal, and we'll bring that before the judges. I sir. object to that question as being non as within outside the scope of this uh, in, this deposition. I understand your objection. Okay. We'll bring that before the judge. Uh, are you familiar with any other employees or officers with HealthSmart, sir? Again, I, I can't remember, I can't tell you, I can't. You should ask Health Smart. When was the last time you spoke to Ted Parker, sir? I, I, I have not spoken to Ted Parker. Ever in your life? I've spoken to him. My question was, when was the last time you spoke I, to him? I can't tell you. Um, today? No. Uh, last week? During this entire last seven days? No. For, I, during the last month? Can't tell. I don't remember. Do you, I see that you have a phone there. Do you have Mr. Ted Parker's cell number on your phone? Um, do I have his phone number? Let me see. I don't know, you would have to go, you would have to request the information. I'm asking right now, sir. Well, I'm, I don't think Are that's, you refusing to answer it? I have many numbers. I, I have, know, but it's really I have easy. Mr. Sias's number on there. Would I'm you sure like to you see do, that? sir. I'm asking you about Ted Parker. Do you have Ted Parker's no, number on that cell phone? No, I do not. You do not. All right. Uh, what's your cell phone carrier, sir? What's my cell phone carrier? Yeah, what's Metro PC. Metro PC? Is that based out of Dallas? It's based out of Dallas, right. Okay. All right. Could you please tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what is the your cell number, sir? 214-524-1741. Is that the only cell number you carry, sir? That's it. That's Okay. Is that the same... Um, well, let me let me strike that. Let me back up. And what? I have another one. It's two one four four six nine four nine six three. Do you have any other numbers uh, other than those two that you might use in connection with Acción América or Care for Brownsville or CareBrownsville.org? Which one? Do you have any other numbers other than these two that you've given me? Five two four ten eleven. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you just gave me. What is it that you just gave me? Five two four seventeen forty one. Yes, sir. 469 PYME um, 
384-KIDS and 214-524-1011. Uh, these other numbers that you're mentioning, are those cell numbers or just office numbers? Those are cell numbers. Okay. All of these are under Carlos Quintanilla? That's correct. Okay. Uh, do you use all these numbers in connection with Acción América? Yes. Do you use them also in connection with CARE or Brownsville? Yes. Okay. The website for, and I'm going to get back to these people, I just want to ask one thing in terms of Acción América. The website that, that is maintained for Acción América, who pays for that website? Azteca BDG, Carlos Quintanilla. Okay. Uh, so whenever a check is written, a check comes from you individually for the maintain, maintenance and whatever subscription fees you have to pay for for that website. Or a credit card. Okay. But it comes from Carlos Quintanilla. That's correct. It doesn't come from anybody else. That's correct. All right. Um, <clears throat> same thing for Care Brownsville. Does it maintain a website? Yes, it does. And same questions. Does the money to sustain or to maintain that website, is that paid by Carlos Quintanilla? That's correct. Anyone else? Nobody. Okay. Let me take you back then to this thing about HealthSmart. Um, and, well, I'm sorry. Let me back up. You said, if I remember correctly, a, few, a minute or so ago, you said that you did not know how much money HealthSmart provided or Ted Parker may have provided to Acción América. I think that's what you did say. Is that correct? That's. I, I didn't say that. I said I can't I'm tell sorry. you. Okay. I, I don't have an answer to that. Okay. All right. How is it that you were able to formulate or put together your tax return if you have, if you're not able to? Okay. Well, you're on the deposition. If you'd like to, let's go off the record for a minute. If you'd like to take that phone call. Off the record. My question to you is this. Uh, in terms of how you put your tax returns together, how is it you allocate or, uh, or are able to put together the number in terms of these monies that you receive? How is it that you know where they come from? How is it? Is it just a blind contribution of some sort? You just don't know where it comes from? Is that what you're No, no. I give it to our accountant. She oh, accumulates okay. it. She okay. basically does the report. Who's the accountant? Sabina Nieto. And where is she based? Dallas, Texas. What's her address, sir? Um, I don't have it uh, with me, but I'll provide it for you. Is she actually a certified public accountant um, or just a bookkeeper? I think she's a bookkeeper. Okay. Would she be listed in the yellow pages? She might. Okay. I would ask that when you get this uh, uh, deposition and that there are a little blank <coughs> left, that you provide us with her uh, contact information, please. Not at all. No problem. Thank you, sir. Um, when the contributions are made, do you actually take it to her and say, and, and I use contributions for lack of a better word, if there's a better word, you please, you insert that word. But when these monies are received to support Acción América, for instance, do you go to your bookkeeper slash CPA perhaps and say here, this came in for, uh, in support of Acción América, but it's going to be reported on my tax return? Is that how you do that? It goes into a bank account. Okay. And from that bank account, we draw funds. All right. Where do you have that bank account, sir? At uh, Chase Bank. And which, which branch? Uh, there's two branches, Oak Cliff and North Dallas. Okay. And, and Oak Cliff, I take that's in Dallas right. as well. All right. And both of those, those accounts, are they under your name or are they under any of the DBAs? They're under uh, Carlos Quintanilla, Azteca BDG. Okay. Or do any of the other DBAs have bank accounts, specifically Acción América or uh, Care Brownsville? Care Brownsville does not. Acción América has, I think, an account at Bank of America okay. and maybe an account at Chase. What branches, sir? I, I could not tell you. Uh, would it most likely be up in Dallas? Could be. Could it be in Brownsville? No, I don't okay. think so. Do you think they're in, perhaps in Dallas? Yes. Okay. Would your bookkeeper know, have that information more so than you? Yes, you would. Okay. Um, Pat Lehman. Do you know a gentleman by the name of Pat Lehman? Yes, I do. Who is he? He's a board member. W board member where? He used to be a board member. With where? The Brownsville Independent School District. Okay. And how are you familiar with Mr. Lehman? I'm just familiar with him because he's in Brownsville. 
these you know, many, many different actors in this whole, you know. I'm just asking about Mr. Lehman. Mm -hmm. Has Mr. Lehman provided any kind of either in-kind or and or financial uh, contribution to Action America? No. How about to Care Browns? No. All right. Uh, when was the last time you spoke to Mr. Lehman? Actually, he was in Dallas this weekend. When was the last time? And so did you speak to him? Yes. Okay. Uh, tell ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what was the purpose of your meeting with Mr. Lehman? Um, he was in Dallas doing some business. I think he has a scooter company. Yes, sir. And uh, he called me and said, hey, I'm in Dallas. I said, yeah, great. You know, let's uh, get together. And did you? Yeah, we did. Uh, during the meeting with Mr. Lehman, did you discuss any of the issues that related to this lawsuit? And this lawsuit, the purpose for which you're here today? No. Okay. Did you discuss with Mr. Lehman anything having to do with the politics of the Brownsville Independent <coughs> School District? No. Okay. Actually, I took him to, the, uh, to a fundraiser uh, in Dallas, Texas for County Commissioner Albert Garcia and City Council Member Trini Gonzalez. Okay. Is he supporting them? No, he doesn't know him. He just. Okay. Are you supporting him? I am. Okay. Same kind of question with Mr. Parker. Um, do you, as you sit here today, have you ever discussed with Mr. Parker with, any. With Mr. Parker or Mr. Lehman? No, I said same question as to Mr. Parker. I'm mm -hmm. changing subjects. I'm sorry. I should have said that to you. I'm changing subjects. Before we go to Mr. Parker, let me ask you about <coughs> Prior to meeting with Mr. Lehman, and I think you told us it's just last week you met with him. Um, this week. Or this week. Friday. Friday. How often do you meet with Mr. Lehman? Or have you met with Mr. Lehman? Is this a regular thing or just every so often? No, I don't, I don't meet with him on a regular basis. I mean, I don't, you know, I've had lunch with him. I've had lunch with uh, many people here in Brownsville. Prior to this last week, when was the last time you met with Mr. Lehman? Five months ago. Five months ago. And at that meeting, or any other meeting prior to, the, to, to this last week, have you ever discussed this lawsuit and or the issues of Brownsville Independent School District, the political issues of Brownsville Independent School District with Pat Lehman? No. Okay. Now let me ask you about Ted Parker. Mm -hmm. Same kind of questions. Have you ever discussed with Mr. Parker um, this lawsuit? Have I ever discussed this? I, I've discussed it with John Barr. Uh, no, I'm asking about Mr. Parker. Well, I've, I've discussed it with John Barr. And I, I believe John Barr is an attorney for Ted Parker. I'm not asking about him. We'll ask him in a, about him in a minute. I'm just asking about Mr. Parker. Mm -hmm. Individually, did mm -hmm. you ever discuss with Mr. Parker this lawsuit? Have I discussed with Mr. Parker this lawsuit? I've issued releases, press releases, and I believe Mr. Parker has been a recipient of those press releases, yes. All right. And have you discussed those press releases with Mr. Parker? He's obviously, in, the, in those press releases, it discusses the issues that uh, have been raised regarding this lawsuit. And you have discussed those press releases with Mr. Parker. You might understand that that's what no, you're telling us. The, the press release speaks for itself. Well, I don't have the press releases in front of me, sir, so I don't know what you're talking about. I'm asking you, have you ever discussed the lawsuit with Mr. Parker? It's a simple question, sir. I, I think Mr. Parker uh, has read all the commentaries. Uh, I, I would believe that he would read all the commentaries regarding this lawsuit and everything else that's been involved in Brownsville. He, he was a businessman. He lost a $48 million contract. I'm sure that he has some concerns. I'm sure he's aware of what's going on. I take it by your answer that you're refusing to answer that question. I've answered we'll move it. On. I've because answered it. If you no, sir, refuse you to take that as an answer, then, then... Sir, it's a very simple question. I've answered that. Have you ever discussed with Mr. Parker this lawsuit? I've, I've indicated that I have sent press releases. Re re That's re fine. I'll re assume that you don't want to. I'm going to presume I'll bring that before the judge as well. Why is it that you're talking to Mr. Parker's attorney about this lawsuit? John Barr is a friend of mine. Okay. And Mr. Barr is uh, licensed to practice in the state of Texas? That's correct. Where is he based? He's based in Dallas, Texas. All right. And what is it that you've discussed with Mr. Barr concerning this lawsuit? That I got sued. And what else? She said, defend it. What else have you discussed with him? That's it. 
That's it. Nothing more. Pretty much. That's so those it. two sentences were said. That's it. Okay. So if we ask Mr. Barr uh, those questions, you would naturally assume that he's going to answer in the exact same way, that there was only two sentences that you guys shared between each other about this I lawsuit. I talked to Mr. Barr about everything. Uh, Mr. Barr filed the lawsuit against Farmer's Branch. I'm talking Mr. about Barr, this lawsuit, uh, sir. You know, I, I don't know how many conversations I've had, whether it's two sentences or ten sentences or 15 words well, or 100 words. I don't know how many words. I, I can't tell you exactly how many sentences or how many paragraphs or how many uh, conversations I've had with him. I have many conversations with Mr. Barr. So, to the best, to the best of your ability, you're telling this, ladies, you're telling the ladies and gentlemen of Cameron County, the jury uh, of Cameron County, that the best you can remember is you told him you were sued, and he said defendant. That's the best you you can tell him. I've told him that I am being sued, and uh, I advised him of it, and we've had conversations. Anything that I um, talk to you regarding my conversations with Mr. Barr would be privileged, and I think that they would be. Um, in what way are they privileged, sir? Well, he's been my attorney in other cases. Is so he your I, you attorney know, in this case? He's not my attorney in this case, but I don't. You know, I, I, if I have conversations with my attorney, then I would wish that those conversations with my attorney in other cases be protected. Are you asking me to disclose uh, potential? Uh, I'm asking you what conversations you have with Mr. Barr. And if, again, if, hold on, hold on, Mr. Catania. Unless you sit here and tell me, and tell the judge, and tell the jury that Mr. Barr is your attorney in this case, then it is not privileged. I would submit to you. What? But I understand you may not believe me, and we'll let a judge decide that. All I'm asking you is, are you refusing to answer the question? I, I believe that Mr. Barr has represented uh, Carlos Quintanilla in the past, and any conversations that I have with Mr. Barr. Our privilege, and I refuse to answer, or give you any information be, be regarding you. any conversations I've had with Mr. Barr. That's a very simple. Thank you very much. That'll be very clear for us to bring that before the judge. Let me ask you about Hector Gonzalez. Who's Hector Gonzalez? Do you know him? He's a superintendent that was um, unjustly terminated yeah. by the Bronzeville Independent School District. Sorry for interrupting you. How is it that you came to know Mr. Gonzalez? How did it come about to know mm -hmm. Mr. Gonzalez? Um, through parents. Through parents? And perhaps this is a good... Through parents and employees of... Okay. And Bronze. that's what I want to ask. How is it that you became involved in this issue? Was it that you were reading about it, or did someone call you? Did someone send you an email? How did you become involved in this in this issue with respect to Mr. Gonzalez's uh, dismissal? Or well, you know, um, I, I know Mr. Gonzalez before Brownsville. I mean, we're, you know, I'm sure you've Googled Carlos Quintanilla in education, and we've been very active on the issue of cheese heroin. Um, we've been very active on the educational issues of the Dallas and the Penn School District. Um, we're very, very familiar with the Road to Broad Prize because Dallas uh, uses the Bro Road to Broad Prize as the, the schematic for the future of its students. And as a matter of fact, the Dallas Independent School District has uh, built their strategy, their uh, achieves program, based on the road to broad. And so in many, many conversations that we had um, with the Dallas Independent School District, we made references to the Brownsville Independent School District and they're winning the road to broad prize. And so when the Dallas Independent School District um, recommend or is trying to achieve the road to broad, and Brownsville Independent School District achieves it, then we want to know who is the person responsible or who is the leader that led that school district to achieve the Road to Broad. And speaking to people from Road to Broad, and, and you know, they're in Dallas and they're everywhere else, the, the, it went to Hector Gonzalez. So, you know, we became familiar with Hector Gonzalez based on that. When was it you, um, you first, uh had your first conversation with Mr. Gonzalez, how long ago was it? So I'm not asking what the I, substance of the conversation, but when, when was it, I guess when you first made contact with him, a couple of years ago? Or just trying to understand. No, it's period. been recent. Recent? Right. Uh, when you say recently, what do you mean? Last six months, last year, two years? Uh, it's been recent, it's been regularly. We, you know, we've, we've included him as a list of potential witnesses. I understand, but when was the first time you made contact with Mr. Gonzalez? And when I mean contact, that you and he spoke, spoke either on the phone or in person? When was the first time? Maybe six months ago, seven months ago. Okay. Yeah, 
did you contact Mr. Gonzalez or did Mr. Gonzalez contact you? You know what? Um, I don't know how, how that came about. I just met him. Uh, he was at a, at a function. They introduced me. Oh, okay. What function was that, sir? It was a it was a meeting of parents, and they did a small thing for him. And I was there, and he was there. Do you know what the nature of the function was? Was it some to give him some kind of an award? It's or like was special it? needs. It was a group of special needs parents. Was that an but but was that a school function or was it a outside the school? It was outside function? the school. It was at a McDonald's. All right. And uh, was it the parents of uh, special needs children that were wanting to voice complaints to him or concerns, or what was it? I, I don't know why, why he was there, but I was there because they invited me. And what was, what was discussed at the meeting? Uh, special needs. Okay, but was it in the nature of, Mr. Gonzalez, we're not happy with what's going on. Mr. Gonzalez, we're happy with what's going on. What was discussed? His, his, when I met him, it was, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Hector Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. And why were you there? W with the parents, special needs. Okay. Um, was he the primary person that you and the parents wanted to speak to? Or was there somebody else that was invited there? I was the primary person. Okay. So the parents invited you to come and he just showed up by That's happenstance. Correct. That's how it happened. Did you invite him to the meeting? No, I did not. Okay. Do you know if the parents invited him to the meeting? I, I could not tell you. All right. Fair. Okay. Who else was at the meeting besides yourself, the parents, and Mr. Gonzalez? There was um, Juanita Gonzalez. There was, uh, I, I can't remember, there's a bunch of parents. That, uh, there's Juanita Gonzalez, was the principal one. Okay. Outside of the parents, any other people, uh, rather any other individuals, such as, for instance, Mr. Lehman or Mr. Parker, or anybody like that? No. Okay. Uh, Lucy Longoria, you are familiar with Lucy Yes, Longoria. I am. Okay, and um, tell the jury who is Lucy Longoria. Um, she is a, um, I think she was the secretary to Mr. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez. Have you ever had any communications or conversations with Ms. Longoria? Many. And, okay, let's start with, when was the first co communication you ever had with Ms. Longoria? When I met with the special needs, she was at that meeting. Oh, that same meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I take it from your previous answer that you've, you've discussed or you've met with her, you've had communications with her many since that time. That's correct. Okay. And what's been the nature of your communications with her? Lots of communications. Yeah, but what is it? What do you discuss with her? Just well, you know, we're building, you know, you're, we're being sued. Um, she is assisting us in... in uh, in gathering information, providing us information, uh, uh, news reports, blog reports. Uh, she has become a, a uh, uh, part of our organization. Uh, she'll pick me up at the airport. Uh, we'll go to meetings. We'll, you know. Is your relationship with Ms. Longoria purely business or is, there, is it now turned into something more personal? It's business, but okay. I find that to be very insulting. You should I be ashamed of you, yourself. Sir. No. Sir, you me earlier mentioned that you were mm -hmm. divorced. Did you not tell me that? I just got divorced, yes. Well, but, I don't know. know. You, uh, there's nothing wrong, that's, sir, in that, asking you. That's really, that's really outside the scope, but I it's a business relationship. What I'm asking, do you have a personal relationship with no, Ms. Longoria? No, it's a business relationship. Okay, that was fair enough. Mm -hmm. There was nothing offensive meant in that. Uh, you said that she is now helping and assisting. What do you mean by as that? As many parents are helping. I understand, but I'm asking about Ms. Longoria. What is it she Hector Gonzalez is helping us. I'm asking about Ms. Longoria specifically. What is it she does? What does she do? Um, Ms. Longoria, for example, if there's an article about Brownsville, she'll email it to me. If there is an issue about Brownsville, she'll send me a text message. If there is an issue uh, regarding uh, reports that uh, are public, uh, she'll make me aware of them. If, you know, she'll give me updates on what's going on at the board meeting. She's attended board meetings with us. Uh, you know, she's been at meetings with us. We've had uh, dinner with uh, individuals where she's been present, so. It, it is, um, how is she employed now? I think she's retired. Oh, she's retired? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, how about Catalina, Catalina Presas Garcia? Who's that? She's a board member. Okay. And what was the first time you ever had communications with her? Ouch. Um, the first communications I had with her is after I met with parents. Is that that meeting that you were talking about earlier, the where Mr. Gonzalez was at? Uh, yes. No, this is a su subsequent meeting. There's multiple meetings. I've had many meetings with parents. I understand that, but we're talking about Carolina Presas Garcia. When was the first time you met with her? Then? I met her at a, at a meeting of different parents and activists here in, in Bronzeville, or in Bronzeville, and she, hap she showed up, yeah. introduced herself, okay. had some water, and, and then left. Do you remember how long ago that was? Six months ago, seven okay. months ago. All right. Um, when was the last time you met with Miss uh, Cat Catalina Presas Garcia? When's the last time I met with her? Mm -hmm. Shoot. A long time ago. A long time ago being a month ago? Two months no, ago? No, longer than that. Well, I think you told us that the first time you met her was six months ago, so yeah. it would have, a long time ago has to be between six months and now, right? Could be about that okay. time. Um, has Going back to Mr. Gonzalez, and I'm going to include Ms. Uh, Longoria and Ms. Uh, Presas Garcia, have any of those three individuals given any financial or in-kind contributions or donations, whatever you want to call it, to Acción América or to Care Brownsville? No. Okay. Let me take you then to Minerva Peña. Who's Minerva Peña? She's a board member. Okay. Same kind of question. When was the first time you met her? I've had a, an extensive telephone conversation with her. Um, was that the first time you met her? Mm hmm And when was that, sir? Six months ago okay. or more. Or I can't tell you the exact time or when it was. Right. It could be six months ago. It could be four months, five months. That's I, I can't enough. recall. That's fair enough. When was the last time you spoke to Ms. Peña? Mm -hmm. I think the last time I spoke to her was during the time of the Joe Rodriguez uh, report. I don't know when that was. I can't tell you. So, exactly. uh, all right, fine. Um, has Ms. Peña ever given any, given any financial contributions or donations, whatever you want to call it, or in-kind uh, contributions or donations to Acción América or Care Brownsville? No. Chris Valadez. Who's Chris Valadez? He's the, um, I think he's the assistant to Judge Costco's. Okay. And do you know Mr. Valadez? Yes, I do. And how do you know Mr. Valadez? I've had uh, lunch with him. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a function that they organized. All right. Um, when was the first time you met Mr. Valadez? At a function that they were, that I got invited to. How long ago was that? Um, Hmm. Over four months, five months. Okay. What was the last time you met with him? Then. Okay. So you've only met with him once? Twice. Twice. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, <coughs> let me just keep going through these people, and then I, at the end I'm going to ask you some general questions as to all of them. Um, David Hall. Do you know a, a gentleman by the name of David Hall? No. All right. Do you know a gentleman by the name of Glenn Hilliard? No. Joe Mendoza? No. Louis Jones? No. Joe Salazar? No. Art Rendon? Art Rendon, I do know. How do you know Mr. Rendon? I believe he is on administrative leave uh, with Brown Brownsville Independent School District. Um, I believe he has a lawsuit against the uh, Bronzeville Independent School District, and I've had several conversations with him. When was the first time you met him? Six months ago? More? Probably about that time. And when was the last time you spoke to Mr. Rendon? Two weeks ago. Okay. And, uh, well, I'll get to the general questions I'll ask you as to each individual. Argelia Miller. Do you know Argelia Miller? Yes, I do. And how do you know Argelia Miller? She is in, uh, 
I think she's running for uh, the water, the, the uh, navigation district. Okay. And she's involved in our organization. And she's an employee of uh, of the uh, Brownsville Penn School District. Okay. What was the first time you met with Miss Bella? Uh, at the meetings. Uh, Six months ago, and I've I, and you know all these. I've had conversations. I've had conversations sure. with Lucy Longoria. I've had conversations I'm with sure Hector Gonzalez. I've had conversations with Art Rendon. I've had conversations with Pat Lehman and and Art Valadez. As you know, there are witnesses that we're going to bring to testify I in the court of law. Miss Miller, in this lawsuit. I understand. Miss Miller, uh, when was the last time you spoke to her? Do you remember? But maybe four days ago, five days ago. Okay. Here's my general questions. Uh, I know you've already, I've asked you these questions to Ted Parker and Pat Lehman, and I believe Hector Gonzalez and Lucy Longoria. But out of, a, out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to ask you again, as to all these names I provided to you, I'm going to ask you two sets of questions. One is, have any of the people that you've said that you do know, have any of them provided any kind of financial compensation or contribution or in kind to Action America or Care Brownsville? They've all provided in kind to Action okay. America. Explain that. How have they done it? Time, picking me up, mm -hmm. uh, making copies, uh, paying for his lunches. All right. Mm, you know, all, that's pretty much it. Do you report that in kind in your tax return? Yes, we do. Okay. So there would be a specific classification on your tax return of where that's reported? That's correct. Okay. As you sit here today, do you know what the total amount was for no, the last reported here? All right. Uh, with respect to all these individuals that you've, you've told us that you know, and the record will show who it is that you said, uh, have you discussed this lawsuit with them? Outside of the two sentences you told us with respect to the lawyer, um, outside of him, any of these individuals you've discussed this lawsuit? All of them. We've discussed. Oh, all of them? That's right. Okay. What has been the, the nature of your discussions with them? What, what is it that you talk to them about? Uh, Outside of the fact that you've been sued, what is it that you talk to them about? Well, we've asked them to sign affidavits. Okay. Uh, we've asked them well, to let give Let me us stop you there, because I don't want to lose this. You've asked them to sign affidavits. Um, right. Who is it specifically that you've asked to sign affidavits? Well, you know, we've, we've disclosed that in our discovery. I think that, you know, we've... Well, I read your discovery. I don't think there is any listing there of people that are going to provide affidavits. Uh, but that's the specific question. Well, they, they would provide testimony. So we have people that have, are, are talking to them, mm -hmm. um, kind of hearing their story, uh, documenting it. When you say there are people hearing their story, who's the people that are hearing their For story? For example, Lucy Longoria. You know, I've asked to talk to Art Rendon, get an uh, get an idea, get you know the specifics, what went on in his case, uh, what are the issues in the case, uh, what are the allegations in the case, what he feels are you know positions that are, are adverse to him. How can we use any information in our lawsuit to defend ourselves against Mr. Sias and Cortez? You know, the, the the work that you would do as a good lawyer. This, this work that you're describing, and I thank you for that description, this work that you're describing, have you done that also with all these witnesses? Yes, or is sir. it Ms. Longoria is doing it? I, I've done that. All right. Well, besides yourself then, Ms. Longoria is doing it, right? Right. Anybody else besides you and Ms. Longoria that are doing that kind of, and I would call it grunt work or, or foot, you know, soldier we, we, work to get all that information together. We have multiple people doing Who grunt else? work. Besides yourself, besides Ms. Longoria, who else is doing it? I mean, we have all of them, I and mean, we've we've met with, we've talked to. I've spoken with Ben Nice. I'm who's sorry, who? Ben Nice. And he's an, ben he's the attorney for Art Rendon. And is he also interviewing people and obtaining information for you? No. Mm -mm. Yeah. We've also talked to. Uh, I've met with Mr. Gomez on this lawsuit. Who's uh, Mr. Gomez? Ernesto Gomez? And is there Ernesto Gomez? Is he doing this? Obtaining of information. That's all I'm talking about. Okay, obtaining who of information. You asked me. You asked me. Who have I talked to regarding no. this lawsuit? No. Okay, then no. can you I'm repeat asking, the question? Yes. You took us into this subset of information where you said that Ms. Longoria was assisting you in putting together this information, putting this information from potential witnesses who will either provide an affidavit or testimony. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, she's assisting so, us in secretary administration. I got you. Okay. So besides you and bes besides Ms. Longoria, who else is doing the footwork? Who is going out there and interviewing all these witnesses besides you and Ms. Longoria? Who else? 
Well, we have a lot of people. <laughs> Just who else any, is doing anybody it? that he has a story or a message or an incident yes, or, a, or we're asking them to contact with us. No, no, I understand. So that. we're getting calls, for example, from someone says, "Hey, look into this. This may be able to help you." Okay, so we follow up on that. They go oh, ask this person regarding this, and and then we follow up on that or say, "Or." Oh, you know, how about this person? Look at, ask for this contract or ask for that. So we're getting a lot of information from a lot of people that uh, we've raised in our lawsuit. And so I think that what we're doing is talking to as many people as we can um, to get as much information so that we can uh, adequately uh, present our arguments in court. Objection, non-responsive. This is my question to you, Mr. Contenia. I understand that there's got to be a few people, or maybe only one or two, that are obtaining this information, obtaining it. I'm not ta I understand there may be many sources. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Yeah, there's just but one or two. Three, that's what I'm asking. Three people. So you said three. Carlos Quintanilla, Lucy Longoria, who's the third? And uh, Miss Perez. And give me her full name, please. Um, Maria Perez, Maria Perez, Perez. Okay. And how do you know her, and where is she from, and so forth? She is the she is the owner of 1205 St. Charles. I call her Mama Perez. I'm sorry, you have to excuse me. I'm from. Over Th that's here. that's who rents me, her her. Her off her bedroom, her room, her house. Okay, where you live. Right, exactly. I'm sorry, it's 1205 St. Charles Road. Is that east or west? It's, I just got to St. Charles. I, you know, I just go there, I stay there, and I go on. If I come for a day or two days or a week. Well, if you're going there off of Business 83, which way do you go? I, I'm, I'm always driven here. So okay. All right. Fair. Well, you, I'm sorry about that. That's I mean, right. I, that's right. Were you driven here today? Yes, I was. Okay. So you have somebody waiting outside for no, you? No, 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 no. Okay. Somebody's dropped you off and come back and get uh, you later on. All right. Who is that, sir? It'll either be Miss Perez, okay. it'll be or Miss Longoria, okay. or um, um, a, a staff person that we've had working here, okay. Martina Jorge Martinez. Okay. Uh, who, do you know a gentleman by the name of Tony Juarez? Yes, I do. And who is Tony Juarez? He is now the uh, executive director of the uh, Brownsville Housing Authority. He's okay. also fired by the Brownsville and the Penn School District. All right. And what was the first time you met with Mr. Juarez? I met with him four months ago. I've had conversations with him, um, spoke to him last week, the week before. All right. Um, and I take it you spoke with him about this lawsuit as well? That's correct. All right. Let me, let me go back before I forget something. In terms of Ms. Longoria, if we wanted to contact her, how can we contact her? Do you have her address and phone number? I have her phone number. Could you provide I, that I could provide that to you. Please. Do you know it offhand right now? No. Okay. What about Ms. Perez? I suspect we would contact her at the same place where you're residing. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. And, and we will probably be subpoenaing Ms. Minerva Peña and Kathy Catalina Presas to testify. Why don't we take a short break, if you don't mind, Mr. Quintana? I need to run the restroom, uh -huh. um, and we can keep going after that. Okay, if that's okay with you. Our restrooms are down there. Do you need anything? No, I'm Water, fine. coffee. Water. We can get that to you. Let's go. Mr. Quintana, we were asking you about um, a list of people, <coughs> and uh, also I think that where we last left off was talking about who else was assisting you in the acquisition, the acquiring of information. Uh, and I think you told us that it was besides yourself, Lucy Longoria and Maria Perez. Um, that takes me to a specific question. In terms of Ms. Perez, do you have a written uh, contract with her where you um, use her house as a, as a residence or you, you reside there? Or is it just a verbal thing that you have? I have a written. You have a written contract? I'll make that available to Please, you. Please, I'd appreciate that. Um, in terms of the, you, I think you told us earlier that you had three places that you, where you resided, right? Mm -hmm. You said Chicago, Dallas, and Brownsville. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, if you had to pick one place that you would consider to be your primary residence, what would you pick? Well, I, I couldn't answer that. I think they're all primary. All three of them equal? Mm -hmm. Where do you spend most of your time? If you had to break up your your year, where do you spend most of the time? 
for a period of time, I spent a lot of time in Brownsville. Yes, sir, I understand that. Um, but let's say for 2009, where did you spend the majority of your time? In Brownsville. In Brownsville. So easily more than 50% of your time in 2009 you spent it in Brownsville? Yes. Okay. All right. And you certainly, I, I'm asking, this is a question, and do you anticipate that to be the same for 2010? It's turning, it's probably going to turn out that way. All right, fair enough. Um, let me ask you, let me jump to another subject. Um, are you familiar with a commercial that aired on Channel 23 in Brownsville uh, a few months ago? Yes, I am. And did you make that commercial, or did anyone with your DBAs do that, make that commercial? No, we, we did that commercial. Okay, and when you say we, who's besides yourself, who else participated in the making of that commercial, sir? Uh, Flash. I'm sorry, who is Flash? Um, Flash is the uh, video production company that we use. Where are they based, sir? Carrollton, Texas. Okay, and for lo I think Carrollton is up towards Dallas, is it not? Yes. Okay. And I'm sorry, Fla what's the name of the company? Flash what? Um, Flash, F-L-A-S-H. -L yeah, but what's the rest of the name? That's it, just, oh, Flash. just Flash. But it's a video company? Mm-hmm. Do you have an address for them and a phone number? Um, no, but I can make that available to okay. you. And <clears throat> how much did that, uh, yeah, how much did they, uh, did Flash charge to make that video? How much did they charge us? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Not much. Was what is not much? I think 100 bucks. A couple Just 100 dollars? Not much. Uh, did you pay them out of your uh, your account or any of the accounts uh, for any of the D from any of the DBAs that you own? I think I paid them out of Carlos Quintanilla. Okay. Um, and that would have been in form of a check? Cash. Cash. All right. Did you get a receipt from them? Yes. If we wanted to contact Flash, who would we contact at Flash? Oh God, I I, I can't remember. The, I can't think of his name, but I get back to you. Huh? Well, I would ask that in your deposition that you provide us that information. You'll see when your testimony is with respect to Flash, and I'll ask the court reporter to leave a line there so that you can give us the contact information. That's fine. If you do that. Yes. Thank you, sir. Um, is that the only? Um, Compensation you've paid Flash is the hundred dollars. Yes. Okay. Did anybody else contribute monies towards the making of that uh, of that video? No. All right. Is that the only uh, commercial that you have made, um, whether or whether or not it's been aired on TV, with respect to the issues involved in Brownsville Independent School District? Yes. It is the only one. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. I take it you also paid a certain amount to air the commercial. Is that correct? That's correct. And do you recall how much you paid for that? Like $900. I'm not sure. It was also paid in cash. Okay. And that was paid to uh, Channel 23? That's correct. Okay. And you paid that? That's correct. That cash came out of your account? That's correct. All right. Did anybody contribute to those $900, uh, or did that money just come straight out of your cash account, your checking account? It came out of my account. Okay. And that account would be the one under your name or under one of the DBAs? Under, I think, either my name or one of the DBAs. I'm not All right. sure. All right. Let me ask you this. When did you first get the idea to put a commercial like that together, sir? Boy. I know that's a big, broad question, but... I'll give you a big, broad answer. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, after reading um, multiple blogs, uh, Bronzeville Herald articles on the commissary contract, um, after reading articles in the Brownsville Voice on, on nepotism and corruption and, and uh, after reading El Rocinante, after talking to parents, after talking to board members, 
after talking to teachers and administrators, um, businesses, parents, students, uh, after talking to all those people, and there were many, 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 many people. All these sources. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided that you know this is something that needs to be brought out. Okay. And so you decided to put this um, commercial together. And that's correct. Were you the sole author of that commercial, or was there someone else that put it together, or helped you put it put it together? I'm no, sorry. you know we got the input from many different people. I, 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 that was a bad question. L let me ask it this way: the actual logistical of putting it together and what is it going to say and what is not going to say and what's in there and what's not in there. Who did that? Was it you or was it uh, you with other people involved? Me with the input of several people. Who were the other people? Parents. Uh, um, Can you tell me who those parents were? Juanita Rodriguez. I'm sorry, uh, who? Juanita Rodriguez. Juanita Rodriguez, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, guy, I forget the guy's name that's running for... Um, County Commissioner is an independent. What's his name, Mr. I can't remember his name. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, and I'm talking about significant involvement in it. Um, just input, nothing significant. Okay, so besides you, uh, well, let me correct that. Were you the only one that really gave significant input to, to the commercial, or did Juanita Rodriguez, for instance, also give significant input to the commercial? Well, significant is, you know, um, the verbage, like the, I, I think the nepotism, I the uh, favoritism, the sweetheart contracts, the... Uh, is she the one that provided those statements? Well, many people provided that, those statements. The blogs provided those statements. Right. The, you know, the commentaries, the newspapers. Okay. But you, uh, were the, you were the filter that brought it together and put it into the commercial. Right. We're the ones that took all the, that commentary, the opinions of people, and the, the articles that were written in both the Bronzeville Herald and uh, the blogs and we put it together and created the commercial. Was there some kind of a workshop <coughs> where you sat down with people and everybody input gave input as to what should be in the commercial? No, just many people calling us. And so emails, contact forms. I mean, we got tons of contact forms, I'm tons sure of did. correspondence. I'm sure but when you met with Flash, though, to create this commercial, was it you, you yourself that put it, yeah. that mm -hmm. gave that information and said, ultimately, yeah, this is the commercial, this is what it should say? Yes. Okay, so it was you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Thank you for that answer. Um, and, and can you read that commercial so that we can go on the record so that the jury knows what that commercial is? No, that's something for you to decide later on. You can do that. Or I'm sure we will at a later point, but not for purposes of the deposition. <coughs> so for the record, you don't want to, you don't want to ask me, you don't want to tell me what the contents of that commercial is. Does it say any? I don't have the commercial. I've seen it visually, right. but I don't have an actual copy of it. But I'm sure at the time in which this gets to a trial, either yourself or we will put it up there. I promise you. But right now in this deposition, does it say anywhere in their corruption in their commercial? I don't remember. I couldn't remember verbatim what it said. Um, but we will get to other written documentation with respect to... So you're asking me questions on a commercial that you have not seen? Or that oh, I have seen it, sir. I've okay. seen the commercial. I, I mean, first of all, Mr. Contenia, just out of respect to you and out of so that we can proceed with the deposition, I answered that question. But it really isn't for me to be answering questions in this deposition. Well, I, I'm but asking, I will tell you, I have seen the commercial. I'm just asking that question so that I could have a better understanding of what commercial you're referring to. I'm sorry. The, well, the, well, have there been any other commercials that you have paid for, political commercials or commercials that speak to community issues with respect to Brownsville Independent School District uh, that have come out? Are there any other ones than the one that came out on Channel 23? No. Okay. <coughs> and that's the only, the only one we're talking about. Now, I think you've told us that the Care Brownsville still has its website, right? It's not up. It's actually, it's still a constructed wo uh, website, but it's not up. Okay, it's not up right now. That's not. Okay. That's correct. And I think you already told us that um, the the you are the one that has paid for the maintenance of, of that website as well as the one for Axiom. That's website. correct. Okay. And those funds came out of your bank accounts, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did anyone ever make any contributions or give you money? that you put into your account that then you in turn use specifically for the these websites. Uh, that is somebody telling you, 
Carlos or Mr. Quintanilla, here's this money I want you to use for that website. Did anybody ever do that? No. Okay. As you sit here today, do you know anyone that works for or is an officer of HealthSmart? As you sit here today? Yes. Who do you know that works at uh, HealthSmart? Let's break it down that way. Well, there's, I know Clay Timmons works for HealthSmart. What does he do for, for HealthSmart, sir? I don't know. He's the one that made the pre presentation to the school board. Oh, okay. And that presentation, I take it, was some months ago, obviously, or a year right. ago, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, sir? Obviously, Ted Parker is a... Well, he's a former, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's still affiliated. Is he uh, not with, with I, HealthSmart? I, I don't know. Oh, you I, don't know? I, I don't know. Okay. Anybody else, sir? No. All right. So only Clay Timmons and Ted Parker are the only ones that you know whether they are still employed or affiliated with HealthSmart? I, I think that there was a, a woman here named Leticia something worked for HealthSmart. And how did you know her, sir? How did I know her? Yes, she was at, I think she was at a school board meeting or something. Okay. Do you and know I, what? And I've, I, I had, you know, I had lunch with her once. And what was the purpose of your lunch with her, sir? Just to basically investigate everything that was going on. If there was, in fact, you know, what happened with HealthSmart, you know, what happened with special needs, what happened with some of the concerns that parents and teach, that teachers had regarding their insurance. I mean... Do you recall what title she held with HealthSmart? No, I do not. Okay. <coughs> Have you taken a position only with respect to HealthSmart? I know you've taken a lot of positions and I know you'd be very happy to tell us about it, but I'm just talking about HealthSmart. Have you taken a position as to whether HealthSmart was properly um, terminated or not from the uh, services it provided to Bron Brownsville Independent School District? I I've taken a position on the the process and how it was handled based on conversations and commentaries that I've obtained and received. Do you, as you sit here today, do you believe that HealthSmart should still be providing services to BISD? I, I believe that there is a process. I, I, I believe that uh, there was commentary that was made by board members and by the media that, uh, that uh, HealthSmart was um, basically terminated uh, because of political favoritism. And I, 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 I tend to believe that that was probably the case. Okay. So do you, you do believe that HealthSmart should, be still, should still be providing services to BISD? I believe that the, the company that is providing services for HealthSmart, for BISD, uh, the Cal company from Oklahoma had no roots in the valley had no contacts in the valley. This is HealthSmart you're talking this about? This is uh, AAP or... I'm just talking about HealthSmart. Well, I'm telling you, you're asking me a question. I'm about HealthSmart. I'm, I'm giving you an answer. About HealthSmart. I'm talking about HealthSmart and the contract. No, I'm only asking about HealthSmart. No. This is not for you to ask, answer questions about something else. Well, my, my answer... You'll be your chance in front of a jury, sir. Okay, my answer is that, do I believe that HealthSmart should be continuing to provide... provide services to BISD? It's a simple question. I, I believe that if you were to compare HealthSmart with the company that's in place now that has no foundation or history in the valley, that had no in-place nurses, that had no track record of providing uh, medical coverage for the magnitude of, of teachers and employees of the Brownsville Independent School District, that had no existing contractual obligations with some of the hospitals, um, that was very uh, w was not informed in terms of the chronic health care and long term care of of, of employees of Bronzeville, um, and uh, and and was had no relationships whatsoever to the political dynamics of Bronzeville. I would say based on that, Bronzeville should uh, HealthSmart should have continued to be uh, the health provider or a company that had the foundation and the history and the capabilities to provide comprehensive medical coverage to 7,500 people. I think that's important. Okay. So as you sit here today, then I'm, am I correct in assuming that you do believe that HealthSmart should be the company providing services to BISD? Again, I, I believe that based on the dynamics and the history and the capabilities of the company that is in place now, um, I think that if you were to compare them in terms of I'm magnitude not, and effect. Asking well, you're asking person. me, I'm, I'm giving you, you I'm you. asking you, well, I'm telling you that based on that information, based on the history, based on the lack of track record, based on the absence of contracts, based on uh, the, f the, the lack of 
long-term uh, care services based on the fact that they had, you know, the, the, the biggest uh, service provider was, you know, less than a thousand people to get a contract uh, to provide services to 7,500 teachers, I think that's questionable. I think that's suspect. I think that, you know, so merits. So you believe HealthSmart should be the one providing services? I believe that the teachers and the personnel and employees of Brownsville Independent School District should have the best, you know, health care uh, plan manager that, that, that's available. And in this case, I think that the board um, including Mr. Sias and Cortez, acted irresponsibly, and uh, acted irresponsibly and perhaps negligently in denying uh, those those teachers and those administrators with quality, competent, uh, qualified health care. And that's my answer. What part of the question do you not understand that it just requires a yes or no, Mr. Gintani? I've given you my answer. Whether you want to accept it or not, it's you know I'm, I've answered it. So, I, well, then I will naturally presume, and I will represent to the jury of, of Cameron County, that you are saying that yes, that Health Smart, based on all those factors you've twice you've told us, in a lengthy diatribe of, of, of why it is that Health Smart's better and so forth, that you in fact are endorsing Health Smart as the provider for services to Brownsville Independent School District. Thank you very much. I, 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 would, I, I would add a caveat to that. I would no, Mr. Quintana, well, you've answered the question. Thank I've you very I'm, much. And for the record again, I've add, I'm adding a caveat that I said obviously you didn't include this in your statement to the jury, that I believe that uh, in the absence of that, that the Brownsville Independent School District should have hired the most qualified company to provide the services. And if there would have been another company other than HealthSmart that had the qualifications and the extensive uh, employees and the networking, then they should be awarded. So if it would have been X company or HealthSmart company, uh, I'm sure it would be much better than the company that's in place now that has no track record and is suspect and questionable. Objection non-responsive. Are there any other companies that are that you know of that submitted bids to provide services to BISD? I'm sure that there's some. Do you know if they are? I, 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 my understanding was that yes, there were. Can you tell us what those are? I do not know. I can't okay. recall at this moment. But you know for sure HealthMart was I, one, I think, certainly that was a big I think, player here, I, right? I, I think Sigma may have been another one. I, I don't know. I think there, there may be others. Why don't you Why don't you make that your responsibility I, I to do. find I, out what the other companies I do. Are? I have that. Oh, really? I, actually, I do. Okay. You know, uh, let me tell you how I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Mr. Quintanilla. I'm going to ask on, you Mr. a question. Hold on. Okay. I will, I'm going to give you the courtesy. Okay. In the deposition, I would ask you, I'm going to ask the court reporter to set out lines so that you can mm -hmm. provide the names of all the companies that you mm -hmm. know of. Okay? okay? And that'll provide the answer. So we can move on. So that, uh, and I'm going to do that, but I'm going to answer your question. The question, well, I'm, uh, I'm going well, to, for the record, so that it's not understood that I refuse to answer this question, we requested under the Open Records Act that information. Excellent. And uh, we have... Um, we have a actual, um, we have an actual request, and the response from the board, the response from the board is that they lost that file. So we requested that information. We requested the bidding information on the Health Smart, and they basically indicate that they lost that file. So you need to go back to ask Mr. Sias and Mr. Cortez what happened to that file. We requested with due diligence to get the information that you've asked me to, to give you today. And I would be more than happy to share that request for information where we asked specifically and categorically to list the name of the companies who bid on that contract. Excellent. Now, I'm asking you, Mr. Quintanilla, the following. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that the nature uh, or, or the need to answer these questions with going into all these, I don't want to say peripheral because I know you'll disagree with that, but with these ancillary or associated political issues, do you think it's necessary to answer my question I think with that, all these other things? I think that the jury needs to be a informed as okay. to you're asking a question. I think the jury needs to know Absolutely. the contents of my questions and why you know, we've, we've raised the question. I think the basis of your lawsuit is slander and, def and defamation. Yes, and so what I, I think that we're, we're responding to what we perceive was p potential corrupt behavior. Okay. And, and so I think it's important for the jury to understand that our perception of what was going on could potentially be corrupt and or so could be 
uh, negligent or could be malfeasance. And so you believe it's justified to get into all this other information? I think the jury needs should be okay. given the opportunity to hear all the information. Would you deny the plaintiffs a similar request? Sir? Absolutely not. So when, when and if I ask you a question concerning mm -hmm. other issues that may or may not, I mean, I'm sorry, that are related, but maybe not to the main issues, but that are related, mm -hmm. you will not sit here and deny me that information, will you? I've given you the information. Whether or not you want to accept oh. that information, that's, you know, for the jury to Let's decide whether or not yeah. you, you want to. You just want to have a self-serving statement. So. Yeah. Sure. Okay, we're back on record. Thank you. The actions that Mr. Cortez, my client, and Mr. Zayas, my client, took with regard, with regard to HealthSmart or to the new company, these allegations that you're making as to whether it was improper malfeasance and so forth. Did you ever discuss those subjects with Ted Parker at HealthSmart? I discussed them with Clay Timmons. Okay. When did you discuss them with Clay Timmons? He made a, he made a report <clears throat> to the... Um, he made a report to the Brownsville Independent School District, mm -hmm. and uh, we looked at the report. We had discussions with him on. And when did you do that? I think five months ago, okay. six and months ago. Was that a that meeting? Was it just one meeting where you discussed this, or was it many meetings? It was just that one meeting. Okay. And was that meeting a very long meeting? Was it a short meeting? It was an informative meeting. Was that meeting recorded? Were there any notes taken? No, not that I not that I know of. Um, you do understand, do you not, that HealthSmart, when it was fired or terminated, for whatever word you, you wish to use, they stood to lose a lot of money. Do you understand that, don't you? And the company that was hired, they stood to, to make, make a, lot a lot of money, money right? Absolutely. So, so you I'm would, just asking you. So you would agree it goes both ways, right? I'm so not here to answer your question. They, they you could, are here they, to answer they, my question. They could benefit Mr. Mr. Cortez and Mr. Sias and, and Mr. Colunga and Mr. Uh, Objection unresponsive. Or they could benefit, you know, HealthSmart. So it cuts both ways. We, you agree that you, it cuts I'm both ways? I'm asking you about HealthSmart. I'm asking you, do you agree it cuts Sir, both I'm ways? Sir, I'm not here to answer your questions, okay. Mr. Quintanilla. Are you here refusing my answer? I've answered I mean, my, my questions. Question. Whether you think I'm refusing to answer your questions, I don't want to be combative, but I, I've, to the best of my ability, I've answered the questions. Whether or not you want to accept those answers as being uh, adequately or satisfactory to you, that's your position. So you do agree that HealthSmart stood to make a lot of money. Thank you very much. We'll move well, on. Well, no, you're, again, you're putting words in my mouth. I've, I want to clarify um, that I believe that just like HealthSmart could have made money, the new company also could have made more money, and the same amount of money. So it cuts both ways. That's my answer. So your client could have benefited as much as HealthSmart could have benefited. Objection and I think the jury needs I think the jury needs to understand that and hear that and clearly understand that there could have been multiple interests. Objection on response. You're not moving to strike that, right? I'm moving to strike everything that I've objected to as okay. non responsive, sir. It is not the appropriate moment. The moment is before a judge or a jury. Okay. <coughs> Let me go through the rest of these exhibits and maybe we can get you to Move along a little bit here. You mentioned some names, Hall and then. Can you repeat those names? No, David no, Hall. Mr. Quintanilla, I'm going to move along with my questions. You can, you'll have your opportunity when you get the court report um, transcript to write in. <laughs> Let me show you what's been marked as Quintanilla exhibit number two and ask you if you're familiar with that exhibit, please, sir.
It's, it's a response. Are you familiar with that with that uh, exhibit number two, sir? Uh, I'm familiar uh, with this exhibit as I am familiar with exhibit number one. Did you write this? Uh, what is written in exhibit number two? Did you write that, sir? No. All right. Do you know who wrote it, sir? No, I do not. All right. Uh, let me read some statements out of here for purposes of the record. This is the last part of the first paragraph and where it says, they suppress reports except the ones that they pay for and they keep Miguel Saldana and Walsh Anderson they and continue, pay what? Let, they let, permit me to finish reading, and, and continue to reap the financial rewards of their majority. Do you see that statement? That's correct. Uh, you're telling the ladies and gentlemen of the jury you did not write that statement. You know what, uh, if you, if, if, if the ladies and gentlemen of the jury um, are up to the blogs in the Bronzeville Herald and El Rocinante and Run Run and Bronzeville, um, these, this has been, this has been regurgitated so many times in different manners that uh, this is basically like baby food compared to the kind of commentary um, that is on all the blogs that refer to legal fees. The Brownsville Herald had an extensive report um, that I'm sure you're aware of Objection that basically report. talks about the excessive legal fees Mr. and the Mr. suppressing Neal. of reports. I'm Mr. sure Mr. that you are I'm sure that you are aware that the Brownsville Independent School District sued the Attorney General to suppress the reports that uh, that uh, you know suppress multiple reports so you're asking me a question that's public information and I think the jury needs to know that this statement has been regurgitated has been talked about has been discussed has been reported by the Bronzeville Herald and every other media in the valley so I I just want to make that statement to the jury I'm just asking one simple question, Mr. Quintanilla. Are you, are you, or are you not the gentleman that wrote that statement? I, that I've answered that question. You've asked me that question and you said twice. You're not, right? That's right. I'm okay, saying that there's enough. many people fair that enough. you can. Uh, you know, how, how do you get onto the blog? Do you need to, Mr. Uh, Quintanilla? Let's keep going forward. Okay. The next statement there says, "Acción América has already secured attorneys." Do you see that? Yes. Did you write that statement, sir? You know what? We've in our press releases we've said that we've secured attorneys and parents. Did you, know, you write that statement, sir? I'm t I'm telling you that I, there's many people who write for Action America, and this could be one you of have many a list people. Of all the people that write I, for I could not America? tell you. Okay. So you, you need know. to tell me that anybody can just use that uh, that name, that moniker, or however you want to call it. <laughs> right. That's right. They have, have tried to stop them. We have. I've sent letters to the Brownsville Herald because we've had Carlos Quintanilla, someone writing as Carlos Quintanilla. Did you ever write a letter to the Brownsville Absolutely. Herald objecting to this blog? I've, I've written regarding use of Acción America with a double R. I'm, I've, I've repeatedly have, have asked them to delete offensive and vulgar and uh, false information that they have written on behalf of Acción America with a double R, Acción America with a as it is, Carlos Quintanilla, Carlos Quintanilla with a single L, Carlos Quintanilla with double L's, C Quintanilla, many. So, you know, you would have to take this issue up with the Brownsville Herald and determine whether or not they want to disclose information and whether or not this infringes on people's First Amendment rights of freedom of speech. Objection or response. All I'm asking you, sir. I've answered it, my friend. No, you have not answered well, it, sir. Whether you want to take that answer as acceptable, take it. I will take we'll it ask as an the judge to determine whether or not. Please, one time. I'm speaking, he, inter he basically interjected. I'm saying let's ask the judge to determine if I answered that yes or no. Absolutely. And move sir. on. Absolutely. No, sir, I will move on when I am ready okay. to move on, not when you direct me to move well, on. Well, I'm. You either have one or two options. Either three. One, you answer the question. Two, you refuse to answer the question. And you get up and leave, and we'll take it before the judge. So you. Well, you're asking, you're, you're basically being combative. Yes, I am, sir. You're being point. combative, you're being aggressive, and we like the record show that you are acting in a manner that is uh, on becoming an attorney. I think that if you want to ask me questions, ask me questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Whether you want to accept them as adequate answers, 
that's your position. Let the judge determine whether or not the questions are adequate, responsive or not. He will. And then let's move on. He will. Okay. He will, and, and I'll move on with I'm him. sure the judge is a wise person. Absolutely, he'll, he'll, sir. He'll, he'll act accordingly. He is very wise. Yes, he is. Now, when it says Acción América has already secured attorneys, this blog, if I see it correctly, it's dated 9-19-2009. Do you see that? That's at the very, very bottom. It's barely visible above where it says recommended. Do you see yes. that? Yes. Mm -hmm. As of 9-19-2009, has Acción América already secured attorneys? for purposes of filing some major class action lawsuit against BISD? Yes, we did. We, who are we, those lawyers, sir? We actually, the lawyers met with uh, parents in Bronzeville. And who are those lawyers, sir? Uh, it was um, Jeff Tillotson from P Tillotson, Pinker, and Cox. And where are they based, sir? They're from uh, Dallas, Texas. Okay. They're the same law firm that represented Hector Gonzalez. I'm sure you're aware of that. No, I'm not, but that's uh, fine. Now, now this, we've, these we've gentlemen... Have they actually been retained by Acción América? Well, they were. They they came out, uh, spoke to the parents, did investigation. They met with attorneys for Art Rendon and also with uh, Tony Suarez, and I don't know what they discussed. So that's all I can tell you. I'm asking you. No, you. I'm asking you this question: Have you, on behalf of Acción América, retained these? Lawyers? I don't know. Acción America has not retained them. I don't know if parents have retained. Have them. you retained them? I, we haven't retained anybody. Okay. So this statement there, as far as you know, as of 9-19-2009, was not correct. Because well, it says there, excuse me, has already secured attorneys. Well, you've asked me retained. Uh, well, retain secured. Okay, well, then, you know, you asked me, have we retained attorneys? We said no. Have we secured attorneys? We secured attorneys on behalf of uh, parents. Tell the jury what you mean by secure. Well, if if you were to say, hey, you know what, we I'm looking for a lawyer because I think the Brownsville Independent School District violated my constitutional rights. I think that the attorneys, uh, Walsh Anderson, in their report, admit that there's defective testing and the the, viol the the children's rights were grossly violated. If they were to ask me that, if they were to ask me that the the, the conduct and the manner is so offensive and so repugnant that children with special needs have been systematically offended and vulgarly violated, and they ask me to secure them attorneys, I will secure them attorneys. And securing attorney means that I will go to an attorney and say, the Brownsville Independent School District, that Mr. Cortez and Mr. Sias are members of the board uh, with two reports that comprehensively outline that there has been vulgar and offensive and repugnant treatment of children with special needs and their lawyers admit that they have conducted illegal and potentially criminal behavior by by uh, the, 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 the changing the, the reports and, and diluting the reports and misrepresenting and a parent asked me to secure an attorney Yes, I will secure an attorney, and we will continue to secure an attorney when we find reports that are so repugnant, so offensive, and so disturbing that even in the reports that I'm sure that Mr. Sias and Mr. Cortez have seen say they're repulsive, they're offensive, and they're disturbing. So if a parent asks me or any member of the jury asks me to secure an attorney on their behalf based on this report, yes, I would do that. Okay. And Action America would do that. Objection non-responsive. Let me ask you this, Mr. Quintanilla. Do you own a computer? I own multiple. We have. Well, let's talk about I each one. I own seven that you own. computers. Well, let's talk about each one of them. Where? Actually, uh, we own seventeen computers. Good, excellent. Let's okay. talk about each one of them. Uh, Which one would you like? Let's first talk about the total number. You say you own seventeen. That's correct. Where are those seventeen situated? We have one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in Irving. We have Let one. Let me stop there. The eight that are in Irving, are they at a specific office? 139, 139 South Main. In Irving, Texas? That's correct. And who, what, uh, what are those offices or whose offices are those? Uh, that's our Oxygen America office, the Irving office. Okay. That's Worldwide Services. That's okay, so there's that eight computers that are there. Mm -hmm. And those eight computers are used by, uh, by whom? Anybody that wants to go in there. They're okay. open access. But those, but those computers are owned by Acción America. Okay, that's what you're telling it's us. It's like, like a cybernet I cafe. Understand. But they people, are owned by Acción America. People go in there, they log in, and they, they go in on them. Okay. We have laptops there. We have two laptops. We have... Are that... Mr. Quintanilla, you... Well, you're asking me about the computers. Uh, no, no, I'm just asking you the number. I didn't ask okay. you the specific types. 
I just want to know, you have eight computers at the Irving, Texas office for Acción América, right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct. And anybody can walk in and use them, right? That's correct. Any of those people that could have walked in and used that could have been people that authored these uh, exhibit number one and exhibit number two. Could Quite be. Could be. Could I'm, be. I couldn't say that the yes or no, but it could okay. be. Where are the other uh, computers, the other nine? You've given us eight. We have four, uh, five uh, personal computers, laptops, that are assigned to different staff. And who is who are those uh, individuals? Um, Rogelio Santillan. Hold on just a minute. And Mr. Santillan, where is he located and what's his title? Rogelio Santillan is media coordinator for Acción America. Is that a paid position? It's a voluntary position. Okay. Okay, um, where is he based? Dallas, Texas. All right. Who else, sir? Uh, Maricela Avila. And tell me her title. She's a field operations person. Fields, uh, field operations. Mm -hmm. And is that uh, a paid position? She gets paid, uh, you know, depending on the project. Well, how do you pay her? Do you pay her by the hour? Do you pay her yeah, a lump sum? Do you? How it do you depends. If we get a if we get a contract to do outreach to senior citizens, then she goes out and does outreach to senior citizens. And she goes out and does Sumba classes, does uh, senior citizen workshops, does uh, Medicare, manage Medicare information workshops, and, and we get paid and she gets, uh, and she gets compensated for Is that. Is this the sole means of her support or does she have other jobs, do you know? I think she has other jobs. Okay, and she she's has based where? In Dallas, Texas. All right, who else? Um, we have Jorge Martinez had a computer here in Brownsville. I'm sorry, Jorge Martinez? Mm -hmm. And what's his position? He was a staff worker for, for us, Acción America, and Azteca BDG. And is that a paid position? That was a paid position, yes. It was, I'm sorry, it, it was. What happened? When you say was, that means he's no longer, so what happened? That means that he's not no longer putting up signs or, you know, Getting out information or doing does he still have a laptop? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, so who has that laptop? It should be back in our offices. And the office is in Irving. That's correct. Okay, um, so that now gives us uh, what is it? Fourteen. There's three computers that are missing. What? Uh, and then there's one, two, three. There's five, four computers at 421 South Dwight. I'm sorry. Tell me again. There's one, two, three, three computers, three computers at 421 South Dwight. South Dwight, and that's in Chicago. Right. And who uses those computers? Yeah, you know, whoever comes into the offices and uses them. Is uh, does Acción América have a office there? Yes, mm -hmm. it's all offices. Okay. So it's again sort of like a cyber cafe. Anybody can come in and use those. No, people that are involved in our organization. Well, that's what I need to know. Who are they? Rogelio Santillan, Maricela Avila, Celia Bustamante, Mario hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is out of Chicago, so they yeah. travel, Rogelio and Maricela travel up to Chicago. Is that what you're telling us? No, no, Dallas. No, I asked you, Dwight, South no, Dwight. Dwight was is in, in Dallas, Texas. I'm sorry, forgive me. So that's another office you have in the Dallas area. Right. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. All right, so Rogelio uses that one. These, one of these three, Maricela uses it, who else? Celia Bustamante, Mario Trevino. Celia? Celia Bustamante. Bustamante. Celia, Mario Trevino, uh, Jorge oh, Rivera. Oh, no, no, no. I can't write that fast. Mario Trevino. Who else? Jorge Rivera. Okay, who else? Uh, Margarita Santana. All right. Who, who else, else uses it? Michael Quintanilla. And who's Sebastian Michael Quintanilla? Quintanilla, Nicolás Quintanilla. Are these Those are my children. Okay, Michael, and I'm sorry, Michael, who else? Michael Quintanilla, Sebastián Quintanilla, Nicolás Quintanilla. Okay. Are they all affiliated with Acción América? No, they're children, but they use the computer. Okay. Areya Aleman uses it also. Who? Areya Aleman. How do you spell that first name? A-R-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Aleman, okay. How did you decide who, who has access to these computers? You just let anybody use them? No, these come are people. through the door? Or these what? are people we trust with, you know, we, these are loyal. 
they're they're fine. They're part of our core leadership. You know, they okay. they come into the office. They're not going to steal from us. They're no, not no, going to. I'm not implying that. I, I mean, in the sense that, can anybody off the street, Joe Sh Joe Blow, walk off and say, "Can I use that computer?" No. Okay. So there is some kind of control in terms of who uses these computers, right? Right. And any one of these any one of these individuals, all these names that you've mentioned, could have been very easily the author of this blog, like Exhibit One and Number Two under Acción América. Or you're someone that, or someone that they have confidence in and has writing abilities or could use it. Yeah. Okay. Consuelo Marcus, also uh, Yolanda Johnny, um, Hector Fiallos. Those are also part of our core leadership group. Are they still there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are additional names. Right. And when you get this, you get the uh, transcript back, I would uh, I'll ask you to provide any other for names that may come up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me take you to uh, another document, if I may. Let me show you what's been marked as exhibit number three, Quintanilla exhibit number three, and ask you if you've ever seen this, please. And please take a few seconds or however t much time you need to read it. Let's go off the record for a minute so he can have the chance to read it. Oh. Mr. Quintanilla, I, we're back on the record now, and I've put in front of you um, exhibit number three. Uh, have you ever seen exhibit number three before? Yeah, yes, I, I, I have. And I, I believe this came out in a room room. Okay. And would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what the El Run Run is? It's a local blog. Okay. And is this local blog, is this uh, a blog site that is maintained by Acción América or is this just an independent group as far as you know? This is an independent uh, blog that has no relationship. To Acción América? Right. Okay. Let me go through exhibit number three and let me ask you a few things. Uh, the first paragraph and says, and, and his, I'd, I'd like I'm to, sorry. I'm sorry, and I'd like to point out that it was written by Juan Montoya. Yes, sir. Okay, well, that's fine. And, yeah. and since, for your information, when we offer exhibits of this type, they will be part of a transcript. I mean, part of the record mm -hmm. in trial in front of a jury. Okay. Just so you know. And so it's self-evident that it says Juan Montoya, but I appreciate that. <coughs> Let me ask you about this. It says Acción América colon. AG, which I take it to mean it's the Attorney General of the State of Texas, to review BISD's $40 million insurance contract. That's what the title of this article says, and I'm going to read the first paragraph. The Hispanic advocacy group, Acción América, said it has said it has received word from Texas State Attorney General Greg Abbott that the concerns about potential fraud and corruption in the Brownsville Independent School District are under review by its criminal division. Let me ask you about that. And I'll go back and make reference to it. It says that the group Acción América has said it has received word. Here's my specific question to you. Were you the source of the information for this article? It was a letter that uh, was um, released to the media mm -hmm. uh, from the Attorney General's office that basically said that. Okay. And did you provide that letter to uh, Mr. Montoya? We, we provided it to everybody. Okay. Did you have a um, phone conversation or an in-person conversation with Mr. Montoya? No. Okay. Um, so, it, I, and I'm asking you, and I don't know if you can offer an opinion or speculation on this, but where it says Acción América said it has received, as far as you know, uh, are they citing that information coming from a letter or it possibly coming from an interview with you or somebody else? Do you have any information about that? I, I don't know. I didn't write this article. Okay. Have you spoke to Mr. Montoya? Many times, yes. Um, did you, well, when, when Mr. Montoya was going to write this article, did you, were you part of any interviews for the purpose of putting the article together? No. Okay. Have you, did you spoke, speak to Mr. Montoya since he wrote this article about what he wrote in the article? I don't know if I've spoken to Mr. Montoya regarding this specific article or whether or not he paraphrased me from something I may have said to somebody else okay. and incorporated it within his uh, report. Um, you know, I, 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 can, I cannot speak for Mr. Montoya. Okay. 
Let me take you down to, let's see, one, two, the third paragraph where it says AA. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. It says, has said it has internal documents that can also show potential criminal conversion of the health smart contract to, and then it says MMA in there, period. Records will show that board member Rick Zayas, along with Joe Colunga, who have nexus with Johnny Cavazos, may have violated laws that led to the awarding of the contract with with annual fees of $3 million per year. Do you see that paragraph? Yes, I do. Here's my question to you. What documents, what internal documents does AA have to support that, uh, that statement, especially as re with respect to Mr. Rick Zayas? I, I think that this would be, if you, if you listen to this, AA has said, um, is there something that you have um, that will show that we said this? You know, this has been, this, this commentary has been regurgitated in a blog by everybody and their, their grandmother. I mean, okay. you know, um, this you'll find in the uh, Dallas, in the Brownsville Herald blog, you'll find this in the um, in El Rocinante, you'll find this in in um, in a Run Run. You'll find this in the Bronzeville Voice. You know, this has been. I'm sure it'll be found in a lot of places. Yeah, this is. You know, many people have said that. You know, that there's a nexus between uh, Rick Sias, Joe Kalunga, and Johnny Cavazos. You know, they every. That's the common. You know, it, 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 it's like. Uh, you know, it, it's so prevalent, that statement. So many people have said that there's a nexus between uh, Joe Kalunga, Johnny Cavazos, Hector, uh, Mr. Saez, and Mr. Cortez, that it gets to the point where people believe it. And whether it's a truth, uh, you know, that is basically saying AA has said. What evidence is there that says that we said that? Besides all the blogs and all the information, all the commentary and and uh, blogs that have said that there is a connect. I bet you if you were to open up the Bronzeville here and there was a, there'd be an article of a, of uh, insurance. Uh, some of Rick Sias and Mr. Cortez and Joe Kalunga have a nexus with Johnny Cavazos, and it wouldn't come from Acción America. It would probably come from many other people. That's what people believe. Objection not responsive. Let me ask you the question more specifically, Mr. Uh, Quintanilla. Does Acción America have internal documents that will show potential criminal conversion of the health smart contract. Um, this basically says that AA has said, it doesn't say that Carlos Quintanilla, Objection. and I, you know, I, I can't answer that because this would, this is, could be hearsay, this could be, I'm not asking it's not coming about from that, me. Mr. Quintanilla. I'm asking does, do you or does Acción America have such internal documents? That's a simple question, yes or we no? We have many documents and we'll present those to the court. No, and, sir. And we'll no, just, sir. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. And we'll, we'll, we'll release those documents to you through proper discovery. At this point in time, we're in the investigative process. We are receiving information. And once we receive the information and it becomes available to us, we will share it with you. No, sir. We, we'll get to the discovery in a minute okay. because clearly in the discovery you provided no documents. So that I'm asking you today, does Acción América, as we sit here today, does it have internal documents that will show potential criminal conversion of the health smart contract? Well, we, yes or no? We've said that we have no responsive documents at this time and that the, the scope of your discovery are, are the record overextensive. Will whatever it is. And overextensive and, and unrelated to the scope of discovery. And so here, um, you know, you've asked us, have you asked us whether or not we have internal documents within our discovery? I don't believe so. Mr. Quintanilla, let's move on because obviously you don't want to answer the question. Uh, we'll bring that to the judge. I've answered attention. the question. You just don't want to accept the answer. Oh, I accept it, and okay. I will present it to the judge. I promise you. I'm sure you. you keep Did you on ever personally? You keep on threatening me with the no, judge, it's not a threat, as it's a if fact. you're, as if you're going to go to the judge, and the judge is automatically going to say, Mr. Martinez, uh, Mr. Quintanilla is in contempt. Are you leading towards that? Is Mr. That Quintanilla, we will bring this issue to the judge. Well, then we, will have, we will have a discussion before the judge. Good. I've answered. You refuse to accept Absolutely. those answers. When it's non-responsive, objection, non-responsive. Uh, did you ever personally, in any type of a radio interview, or, yeah, well, let's start just with a radio interview. Uh, and let me, let me back up, strike that. Have you given radio interviews or interviews over the radio concerning the uh, various issues uh, with respect to HealthSmart and the new company in Brownsville Independent School District? I have given radio interviews and television interviews 
regarding a broad scope I'm sure you have. of activities so you have. relating to the school board. So you have. I okay. have discussed the, the Health Smart contract. I have discussed the special needs. I have discussed the Joe Rodriguez report. I've discussed the issue of the Hector Gonzalez. I've discussed the issue of nepotistic, nepotistic hiring of principals and assistant principals that are hired at one school that have relationships or family members or are on the school board. Um, I've raised the issue of you know, the, the excessive uh, use of public monies for the son of Joseph Colunga uh, with the consent and acceptance of Mr. Saez and Cortez. I have uh, discussed issues that I think most members of the jury would be offended by, and I think that they would decide that th those issues need to be made public. So I take it as a yes that you have given radio interviews. Thank you. Here's my question. In those radio interviews, or even TV interviews since you've offered that, have you ever accused Mr. Cortez or Mr. Zayas of being corrupt? I have made statements to the media that there is a corrupt failure uh, on behalf of the board members to disclose material fact. And when, a, when there is two reports that basically refer to criminal conduct by an employee, uh, falsifying of timesheets, uh, which is a federal offense, uh, receiving uh, kickbacks from contractors, uh, using credit cards for personal use, um, allowing the consumption of alcohol uh, in, a, in an area that where consumption of alcohol should not have been uh, allowed, and you have two board members whom you represent, and they failed to disclose that material fact, and they failed to report crim potential criminal behavior to the district attorney, then I, have, I am emphatic uh, and believe very strongly that there is a corrupt failure on behalf of the board members to report potential criminal wrongdoing. And I'm hoping that the jury will agree that when a crime is committed, um, that board members have a fiduciary and ethical responsibility to report those crimes. And in this case, your clients, Mr. Saez and Mr. Cortez, failed to report th that potential crimin criminal behavior. That's my answer. Objection and response. So as you sit here today, are you telling the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that you are in fact accusing Mr. Zayas and Mr. Cortez of being corrupt in their capacity and their position with the Brownsville, Brownsville Independent School District, sir? If you read our counterclaim, we're asking the oh, jury... Oh, we will in a minute. We're asking the jury to remove them for potentially... So you are claiming you know, that they're corrupt? Well, let me read you my... I, I no, think we're going to get to it in a minute. I'm, I'm going to read it to you. Yes well, no, you're, you're asking no, me a question. No, we're not. I'm going to read Off my, the record. No, no, no. I'm going to read no, my... Off the record. Off the record right now. Mr. Uh, Cooper. Um, could, you call, could you read back the statement uh, prior to going off the record? Question was, so you're claiming that they are corrupt? Answer, well, let me, uh, and that's when y'all's argument started. Do before uh, that, yes, so before you can that. get a better one. Do you have on the well, argument started? We're asking the jury to remove them from potentially, that was your answer, my mistake. Let me start, I'm sorry. Well, in a minute, we'll, in a minute, answer. We're asking the jury to remove them for potentially, and the question was, so you're claiming that they are corrupt? For potentially, so that sentence was not finished? Y'all, that's when y'all's argument started. No. So, so you can, can you go now, Mr. Mr. So can you go back to prior question? question part of that was, as you sit here today, are you telling ladies and gentlemen of the jury that you are in fact accusing Mr. Zayas and Mr. Cortez of being corrupt in their capacity and in their position with the Brownsville Independent School District? Sir, question, or excuse me, answer. If you read our counterclaim or asking question, oh, we will in a minute. 
your answer was. We're asking the jury to remove them from potentially. Uh, to, again, when y'all. I'll give you the chance to answer whatever you'd like to say, Mr. Catania. No, I, I, basically you have indicated that you have terminated this deposition. No, I have not terminated. I um, said if you continue off, the same off, behavior. Off the record, you have indicated that you have you are terminating this deposition. Uh, I will accept that you have terminated no, this I have deposition. Not, so I you're not. saying you're not going to terminate? No, not, not, not if, unless you continue. So you're, your you're going to retract your, your, your threat to terminate this? Are you going to answer questions, Mr. Catania? I, well... I want to be on the record so that we have this discussion so the judge understands Absolutely. clearly. So you're saying that you are not canceling this Absolutely. deposition. That's what I just so finished. you're retracting your statement I'm not retracting of canceling any the statement, sir. So you're retracting the statement that you're canceling this deposition There's that, no you're, that we're, you're going to we go will before continue with the deposition. That you will, you're going to go before the judge and have it heard before the judge. Are you saying that we should go before the judge and have a hearing on this deposition? No, you know what I'd like to do is finish up my questioning, especially when we get to the documents that you haven't produced and we'll we'll present it in a global package to the judge so he can consider no, all the you've issues. You've indicated to me that you're terminating this. I have not. Mr. In the presence of other individuals here, you've indicated to me and uh, we will we will uh, have them sign an affidavit that you've terminated Mr. this uh, Quintanilla, deposition. So officially on the record, I'm saying I'm not... One time, one time. Mr. Quintanilla, if you I have, will not speak over you. Go ahead and finish. If you have indicated in the presence of Mr. Cortez, Mr. Sias, the gentleman here, and the court stenographer off the record that you have officially terminated uh, this deposition, then I consider this deposition to be terminated. It is not terminated. I have not done that. And whatever misunderstanding may have been, occurred in terms of whether it did or didn't, I am telling you on the record, it is not terminated. So then you're apologizing for your I'm statement. I'm not apologizing one bit, Mr. Quintanilla. I would like to proceed so that we can get this clear for the judge. That's what I'd like to do, sir. Are you prepared so then to go you're, forward? Then you're going to refrain from making threats and intimidation that you're going to go to judge and this and this no, and that? No, sir. I, when, when the moment requires and when the moment is appropriate, I will make it very clear to you, sir, that I will bring these issues before the judge. So well, I, I think it's not that, a threat or intimidation, I think that sir. the judge should be uh, advised that you have repeatedly um, used uh, the judge to intimidate um, and threaten me with uh, failure to respond. I think that, that the judge should be aware of he will. that he is being used. And we're going to file a motion with the judge uh, asking him to sanction you for uh, you know, your behavior and your actions here in this court. And you have that right to do, sir. So noted. May we proceed, sir? Yes. Good. Let's do that. <coughs> with respect to Exhibit 3, if you look at the last, second to last full paragraph, it says, Carlos Quintanilla, Director of AA, said his group had already consulted with attorneys who have expressed their willingness to file a class action lawsuit against the district on behalf of special needs students who have been misdiagnosed by district psychologists that district administrators and legal representatives knew were not qualified to diagnose them. Do you see that paragraph? And that's an absolute truthful statement. Whoever wrote that, hallelujah for saying the truth. Do you see that paragraph? Absolutely, I do. do you you see where Mr. Montoya quotes, he says that you said this. I've said that, of course. And so my that, question that, to you is... I've said that to Channel 4. I've good. said that to good. Channel 23. I've said that to the Bronzeville Herald. I've said that to... I've even said that to Mr. Cortez and Mr. Saez in, in, in my presentation to the school board. Okay. I mean, this is nothing that, that I have not said. I agree. I have said that we have consulted with attorneys who have expressed their willingness. Doesn't say that I have consulted with attorneys who have been retained to file a class action lawsuit. That's not what I'm asking about, I, I'm Mr. saying that, and I'm going to paraphrase it. it. Says Carlos Quintanilla, director of Acción America, said his group has already consulted with attorneys, and yes, we did consult with attorneys, and yes, they expressed their willingness to file a class action lawsuit. And yes, the district has admitted that there were defective testing, that there was misdiagnosis, that the, re the, the testing was disturbing, that the, the report should be diluted by the district, and, and uh, it is there in their own writing, in their own verbiage, and in the reports that Mr. Cortez and Mr. Sias received. And despite receiving these reports, Mr. Sias and Mr. Cortez reviewing these reports that said that there was disturbing, gross civil rights violations for 10 years, that the reports were diluted and defective and there was misdiagnosis, 
that they failed to act on them and that they grossly violated the, ch the rights of, of children with special needs for 10 years. I think that the jury needs to hear that these two gentlemen have perpetuated and allowed the defective testing of children with special needs, that they have allowed you know, a corporate counsel or, or school counsel to, de to delete and, and, and refuse and, and, and alter the reports and to me that's disturbing and if I say this, this statement I stand emphatically and affirmatively behind it. So you gave this interview to absolutely. Juan Montoya? Absolutely. I have said it Excellent. over, I, I, not to Juan Montoya, I'm going to clarify that. I have made this statement to mem many members of the press and it's not only to Mr. Montoya but I said it to the Brownsville Herald, I said it to Channel 4, Channel 23 and I will continue to say it. I will continue to say that Mr. Cortez and Mr. Sias and the rest of the board have accepted comprehensive reports that were submitted where these comprehensive reports and the jury should know have included statements that say the reports are disturbing that the special needs testing of children were defective and, and offensive that uh, the lawyers for the Brownsville Independent School District that Mr. Sias and Mr. Cortez have retained have altered those reports and have diluted those reports and that no action has been taken on behalf of these children and I think all the members of the jury should hear the abdominal behavior of both board members and the repugnant uh, report that uh, we're going to submit to them as evidence. You yes, I said that said. absolutely. I stand by it. I believe in it. And I think that the jury should be repulsed by this. And you are saying it intentionally and willingly, are you not? I'm saying that the report speaks for itself. But you're, what you're saying is that you stand by this and it's an intentional act. I'm you're not doing this just by happenstance. I'm, 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 it, I'm, say, I'm saying that I'm not, it's not an intentional act. Oh, really? It's not a premeditated act. Oh. It's a factual. It's, a, it's the, the report. Have you seen the report? I'm asking you Have the you question, read Mr. the report? Quintanilla. Mr. Quintanilla? Have you read the report? Mr. Quintanilla, I'm asking you the question. I'm, I'm asking you the no, question. Have you read the report? I'm not here Have to answer Have you questions. looked at the report? I'm not here to answer your questions. Have you asked, looked at the report? Are you Have you discussed with your client that report? Mr. Quintanilla, I I'm refuse, asking you a question. I am not answering your questions, well, Mr. Quintanilla. This is I've not answered a deposition my of question. mine. Well, fine. That's what I'm asking you. So you stand behind these statements. You said that you did. That's fine. I, well, my point here is well, this. What are, you, what are you trying to get at? Your if question you is overbroad and it's not specific. Could you ask me a specific I will question if you regarding let me finish this? Okay. If you let Answer, me finish. Ask me a specific question. Absolutely, which okay. is what I've been doing all day, Mr. No, you have not. You've been, you've been legalizing and trying to, to expand the question, and you've gone beyond the scope of what I think is adequate and, 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 and you part will, of this. And you will bring it before the judge. Well, yes, we will. Good for you. I think you should, sir. Yes, Here's we will. Here's my question is, Juan Montoya is saying that you said his group has already. My question to you is, where would he get that statement from? So if you, excuse me, let me finish. How can I ask you a, a straight question or a direct question, which is what you want, if you won't let me finish? The question is this, where would he get that from if he, you say you didn't speak to him for purpose of this article, sir? Well, you know what, there's, there's uh, uh, additionally AA states what does that mean that AA states? Where you see where it says AA well, states? Well, let's go back to that no, one. No, I'm talking, no, no. Well, sir, let's I'm go back. If you're going to ask me about Carlos no, Quintanilla said, in the same report it says, additionally, AAA states that a report by the independent consultant Looney was eventually found to be fraudulent, defective, and incorrect. So, are you saying that, I, that Mr. Montoya is verbatimly paraphrasing me and that I said it to him when, you, when it shows that additionally Quintanilla director said? What's the question? I already asked you the question. Did you give an interview to Mr. Montoya and from which he got this? I've statement? given many interviews to many people and I think they're public record. Did you give it to Mr. Montoya? I'm, sir? I've answered that question. I've given many interviews. Did it's it public in, record. Did you it can include Google Mr. it. Montoya? It includes many people. Did it include Mr. Montoya? You know what? I can't tell you. I can't remember if Mr. Montoya That's was at our press conferences. That's, it was simple. Okay. That, would have start, that would have ended this whole conversation if yeah. you explained that to me. It's, it's been explained. Let me take you to exhibit number four. And this is the basis for your slander and defamation. I think this should be dismissed on summary judgment. Well, you'll bring it before the judge. I'm Mr. sure we'll file our motion no, for sure summary will, judgment. Sir. I don't Absolutely. think that there's enough evidence to proceed with a slander defamation case. Mr. Quintanilla, and I you think have the jury now, should be aware of that. Yeah, I'm sure he will. You have now exhibit number four. Are you familiar with uh, what's in that picture? Yes. Uh, tell 
all the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what's in that picture. Why don't you hold it up and show it to them? Well, uh, you know what? I'm going to hold the picture to the judge, to the jury, that is clearer than this. Well, I agree and, with you. This and, is and not the I, best I one. I think this I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to hold this picture All right, well, so that the jury can see a picture that is, is uh, you know, replicated, well, duplicated, uh, that's vague, that has bad quality, let's walk through it. that you can't read. Let's, let's walk, walk through, through it. it, yes. Are you familiar with that, what, for lack of a better word, um, poster or, or billboard, mobile billboard, uh, are you familiar with that? That is in exhibit number four. That is correct. I am familiar with that. Okay. Uh, did you put that billboard together or did you hire someone to put it together? We put that billboard together. We put, it's not a billboard, it's a flyer. Well, whatever you'd like to call it. It's a flyer. Okay. It's a mobile flyer. Well, it's a flyer. Someone took this from our flyer. I'm sh you've, you've, I'm sure in your exhibit you're going to present the flyer, right? I, I think so that there's a chronology of order. Let's present the flyer, which is this one here, and then make this exhibit five, and let's put the exhibit four as a flyer. Do you have the flyer? Mr. Quintana, you can do what you wish once it's okay. your turn to ask yourself right. questions. Well, when we have Mr. Sias right. and Mr. Cortez in deposition, Fine. we'll ask them that Absolutely, question, and then we'll put Absolutely. it on. Okay, all right. Absolutely. But this no, is no. a flyer that someone expanded to do a poster or okay. a so sign. You're saying that there is a flyer that is, what, about eight and a half by 11 that, that was put together by your group or by you? No, it's smaller than that. I think it's four by six. Okay. But you're telling us that you put that flyer together, right? That's correct. Okay. And do you remember about what time period you put that flyer together? Um, I think this six, seven months ago. Okay. And let's look at this flyer. This flyer and... Um, let me read through it. It says but, but from the this top. Flyer, this flyer is, is different from the flyer that we developed. So I, I can't answer this question unless you have the flyer that, that we developed. And, and no, I can ask you a question anyway, and you can tell me you don't know. Okay. Or you're not familiar. Okay. That's all this is about. This flyer or this billboard, mobile billboard, that I'm looking at in Exhibit 4 says at the top, from broad, or bro yeah, from broad to broke. Did you author that statement? Sir? Absolutely. Okay. Then, uh, underneath that, it says something along the lines of parents, teachers. Well, I'm sorry. I'm reading one side of it. Let me skip that because they're both different on each side of that. But a little further, it says abuse, compadrismo, dishonesty, dishonesty, and tranzas. Did you author that statement? Abuse, compadrismo, dishonesty, and tranzas. Did you author that statement, sir? Um, you know what? I, I can't recall because I don't know if this is our flyer and I don't have the flyer in front of me. On your flyer, you're telling us that on your flyer it's not stated? Those four you know, words are not stated? Mr. Sias, if he has a copy of the flyer, I'd like to look at it. Okay. So you don't remember whether you authored that or not, right? Does Mr. Sias have a copy uh, of the Mr. flyer? Mr. Quintanilla, I will repeat again to you. That is not for you to be doing, sir. I'm asking you the question. No. Now, if you'd like to go off the record so you can look through your records, well, I'll be happy to do that. Okay, well, let me... Would you like to do that? No, we'll, we'll, I'll go ahead. I'm listening. I'll answer well, your I'm, questions. Well, that's my question. Did you author these four words? Did I author these four words? Yes, which is abuse, compadrismo, dishonesty, and trances. No, I did not. Okay. So as you sit here today, you're telling us that your flyer says something different. The, my understanding of the flyer, I, I, I don't have it in front of me, so I, I can't recall okay. what the flyer says. All right. But I will make that flyer available to you, and, uh, and then we can discuss it. And there's four pictures in there of uh, Mr. Mr. Rick Zayas, mm -hmm. Mr. Colunga, Mr. Cortez, Ruben Cortez, and Mr. Aguilar. Yes. In your flyer, do you have those four pictures? Yes, we do. Okay. And then underneath that, it says... You are a gang of four. You are guilty as charged. Make a difference. Demand the resignation. Are you responsible for that statement? Or did you author that statement? Well, you know what? I think that's a freedom of expression. I think that that's within the constitutional rights of any it human being. It may or being. may not be. We'll, well leave it for a judge or a jury to decide. Yeah, I'm just I, asking I think, if you authored it. I, I think that, you know, that, that those statements have been made by many people. And I think that this was paraphrased in this... this uh, Did you author that statement? You know, I, I cannot tell you. I can't okay, remember. that's all you need to tell me okay. if you don't know. Now, you see in this picture four... But where does it mention corrupt? In I've this not asked you about the word corrupt, Mr. But, but, but where does it say... Where is the slander and defamation Mr. in Quintanilla, this? Mr. Quintanilla, 
I'm mm -hmm. asking the jury if they're looking at this to, to look at this and see where does Mr. it say corrupt? Mr. Where Quintanilla. does where is this slanderous? Mr. Quintanilla, that is not for you to do at this point. But the it jury needs to, to know that. I think Mr. the jury. Quintanilla. I think the jury needs to know where where in this does it say corrupt? Corruption. Are you refusing to answer my next question, Mr. Quintanilla? This is almost getting comical at this point. Well, you may think it's comical. To me, it's not comical. Well, you're refusing to answer my questions. It's real simple. Well, you're, you're, you know, you're adding adjectives, comical, you know. I don't think it's comical. I think that Mr. in Quintanilla, here it doesn't say anything about corruption. I never asked you the question corruption as to this That's exhibit. the basis of the lawsuit, Mr. slander and defamation for calling him corrupt. Are you, uh, are you familiar with this... Uh, scooter or whatever it is that's attached to this uh yeah that's mr layman's place How do you of know business because i bought a i bought a scooter for mr layman oh. I, and i admit that i bought a scooter for my son do you know like who was responsible for attaching? i like the scooters and i thought my son needed a nice christmas present so i brought bought a scooter a birthday present wonderful for you sir Thank is that the flyer much. mr cortez it is not the flyer it is simply the color picture of what's in this picture that's all since he's showing that, may we, may I see that? Sure, you can see it, if you'd like to see it. And I'd be happy to put it up on the, so that the jury can see that. I think that would be a better picture Absolutely, than this. Absolutely, I think so. Why don't you focus it Why on Why don't this? we, should you have a copy of the flyer too, Mr. Sias, since you've been busy, you've question. been a busy bee over there uh, looking for flyers. Why don't we look at the- Mr. Quintanilla, direct your questions to me. You and I can argue all day, but do not direct your <coughs> questions to my client. Well, I'm asking you, if your client is going to be presenting this evidence, he becomes a participant in these discussions. No, sir, he does not. Well, That is not what the procedures right. require. Let me ask you this, Mr. Quintanilla. Did you pay to put this flyer to blow it up and to put it into this mobile transport or mobile billboard to create it that way. Did you do that? I can't recall if, if we paid for that or not. I know we paid for some signs, but I don't know if that was part of the signs that were ordered. I take it you have some kind of file that reflects your expenditures towards these kinds of things, whether it be a flyer or something more, right? I think there's an invoice. Okay, and where does that invoice kept? It's kept in my office. What office? You have several offices, sir. Uh, in Dallas. Okay. Will you produce that document? Sure. Sir? Great. This is, uh, this is Let the, me go on, sir. Well, this is the same company that produced the... This is the same... The, the company that did the signs is the same company that did the signs for Mr. Cortez. Um, and this is the same company that has talked to us regarding a debt that was owed by Mr. Cortez that was paid by somebody Excellent. else. Excellent. Could you tell us what so that I, company So I want is? the jury to kind of know Great. that that's what, what, a relationship. What was that company, Mr. Uh, um, I don't know his name, but we'll present it Where in an affidavit. Where is the company based? It's based in Bronzeville. And do you know how to get there? Oh, yes. Do you know I what do. the address is? It's on one of the service roads. I, again, I was driving. I, you know, even though I spent six, seven months there, I, I was all, always driven around. Mm, okay. Um, did you ever drive this scooter with this billboard? Never. Okay. Did you ever pay anybody to drive this scooter with this billboard? No. Did you ever ask Mr. Lehman or anybody associated with Mr. Lehman to drive this scooter with his billboard? No. Did you have anything in any way, shape, or form to do with putting this, the flyer or blowing it up and making it into a billboard and driving it around the Cameron County? No. Okay. Prior to today, had you ever seen this billboard in this manner attached to a scooter. Yeah, people said, called me up and said, hey, what a no, nice sir. looking. I'm asking you if you ever saw it, not if other people told you, sir. That's people, my question. People contacted me and said, hey, we saw that billboard. That's a nice looking billboard. We support Objection, the, non -response. we support what it says, that they, it sh they should resign and, and that they should, they should, they should resign. I'm asking you if you ever saw the billboard, sir. Did I ever see that? Well, Did I ever see that? No, 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 no. That was no. simple. You could have answered that a long time ago. We've been real simple. <clears throat> All right. Let me take you to the discovery that you've provided in this case. You know what? We've reached the lunch hour. Why don't we take a break for the lunch hour? 
How much time do you need for your lunch, Mr. Quintanilla? Fifteen minutes. Ten. Well, minutes. that's that's not enough. Let's just say it's it's right now. It's a twenty till one. Let's say let's be back here at about one thirty. Okay. Mr. Quintanilla, we're now back after the lunch break. Uh, I want to move Can I on. Can see those exhibits, please? Okay. I want to move on to some other documents. I'd like to. Uh, Can we go talk back about. to this? This thing, I have a copy of the Absolutely. plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to, this is the flyer. Can we go ahead and, and mark this as an exhibit? Would you, would you mind if we sure. do that? Sure. Not at all. Good. So that, since I've already marked some other ones, I'm gonna, it's going to be kind of a little bit out of order, but it'll be exhibit number seven. Hold on just a minute. And can we Oops. zoom in on this? Yeah. Well, is that the same one as this one? Um, is yeah, it identical? It's the same well, one, hold yes. on. Let me first mark it so that the, we can do this for purpose of the record. I'm trying to see where the heck I can mark it. Suggestion? Yeah. I'll give you two. One that you can exhibit and one that you can... Well, that's not an issue. It's, it's just, I'm just, so it won't show. I don't know if we can do it this way. I think that's probably as much it'll show. Yeah, let me, hold on. Just, there we go. Okay, Mr. Quintanilla, would you show me what is marked as Quintanilla Exhibit Number Seven? Uh, and it has two sides to it: one side in English and one side in Spanish. Would you please hold that up for the jury, both sides, so that they can see that, please? Yeah, this is. Um, I need to hold it up so he can first get this, that. This is actually the flyer that was done by us. We admit. Hold it for a minute, for a minute so that he can capture it. Just there hold it there for a second. It says, uh, "Stop nepotism, compadrismo, sweetheart contracts." abusive legal fees. It says from road to broke, road to road to broke, and it says gang of four, you're guilty as charged. They're being charged with nepotism, compadrismo, sweetheart contracts, and abusive legal fees. Um, reports have confirmed that there is in fact nepotism, that compadrismo exists, that sweetheart contracts exist, and that there's been abusive legal fees uh, in excess of millions of dollars. So I'd like to ask you, where does it say anything about corruption or constitutes slander and defamation in this flyer? May I have a minute? Have sure. you taken yeah. both sides? No, not both sides. Okay. What side did you take? I don't know if you took the English side or the Spanish side. Um, go ahead and turn it the other way. Yeah. I haven't taken this side. Tell me when you've got a good picture of it and taken it. Okay. And then I would like to point out that if you look at this sign, and if we can get a close-up or we can get the color picture of Mr. Zayas' sign, if we would allow that, that you'll see that there's a stark difference to the contents of what is included in this one and what is included in here. That's fine. Are you finished, Mr. Gintani? I'd like the jury to know that there's a difference between what is said in this sign and what was said by Care Brownsville. I'd also like to point out that if you look at this sign, there is no identification of WWW Care Brownsville. This one, we identify WWW Care Brownsville as the author. So for the record, so that the jury can understand clearly um, what was presented by Mr. Martinez on behalf of his clients is starkly different than what we're presenting as something that is authored by us. We can go on. Are you finished? Yes. Okay, I appreciate that distinction. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you produced this flyer. That's, that's excellent. Let me ask you some questions about Quintanilla exhibit number seven. Okay. Um, I'm fluent in Spanish and in English, and so I'm looking at specifically the line, and you have a, a copy. I'll tell you what, why don't you hold the exhibit for yourself? No, you hold it. I'll, I'll, I'll no, have. sir, the rules are that you hold it. You're the witness. Let me have one, please. Thank you. And um, what I want to ask you specifically is a couple of things. Are you accusing Mr. Cortez and Mr. Zayas of nepotism? Well, um... I'm accusing uh, Mr. Cortez, whose wife is an assistant principal uh, at a public school, that we will show through affidavits and testimony that Mr. Cortez was very instrumental in assigning her as a principal at that school. And we will, pr we will present evidence, 
we'll present testimonies and affidavits from individuals at that school where they will confirm and they will corroborate that Mr. Cortez was instrumental in the appointment of his wife as an assistant principal. Okay. So you are accusing Mr. Cortez of nepotism. So if, if that is the case, and, and we will prove it, then yes, that's nepotism. Okay. Would you agree the definite, could you describe what the term nepotism Mr. is? Mr. Quintanilla, this is not a deposition where you get to ask questions, sir. You will can do that when you finally depose these gentlemen. You do not get the right to ask me questions, sir. Can that we, is not the nature of the deposition. Can we look up what the term nepotism, no, since you no, asked for no, it? No, sir, I'm asking these questions. Would you consider that the, uh, the influence of a board member to appoint a his wife Mr. as Kittania, a principal not, would be would constitute nepotism. Mr. Kittania, I'm not going to answer your questions. I'm asking. Well, you're asking me the seven. question, and I'm asking you. I'm not answering your question. Okay, this so is not a deposition. Of so me. you've asked me about nepotism. I've given you the answer. Okay, thank you. So you are accusing Mr. Cortez of nepotism. Thank Based you. on the evidence that has thank been you. presented to us. Let's talk about uh, what you call compadrismo. Now, compadrismo is a. Uh, uh, term, a vernacular, if you will, in Spanish. Could you please explain to the jury what you meant by compadrismo? These were your words, not mine. Well, let's 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 ask the ju the jury to determine what compadrismo is. That's not the way the law works, sir. Well, the compadrismo these are is your words. Compadrismo is a is not a slanderous term. If I were to call this gentleman my compadre, I would not be slandering you or defaming you. I would be saying compadre, which is an affectionate term. If you speak Spanish. Uh, and I would say, hey, compadre, I would not be slandering or defaming this gentleman. I would be talking to him in an affectionate term. So um, you, I've answered that question. Are you referring to Mr. Zayas, Mr. Colunga, Mr. Cortez, Mr. Aguilar in an affectionate way when you use the word compadrismo? I am not. I'm saying that they um, have used their affectionate relationship or their close relationships to allow... Um, abusive behavior go on. And one form of compadrismo is, I would say that you could argue, and the jury can decide whether or not this would constitute compadrismo, that uh, Saez would go to Colunga and say, hey, compadre, uh, we know that your son um, is receiving extensive benefits from the board, Brownsville Independent School District, and that is getting preference of uh, monies that have been utilized for his service. Well, we recognize and we, we feel very sad that Mr. Kalunga's son has special needs, but there are other special needs children who have not received the same kind of benefits or favor as Mr. Kalunga has, but yet Mr. Saez and Cortez have accepted that kind of compadre attitude that a mother that has a special child, a special needs child does not get a benefit but that Mr. Kalunga does. And I, it may be funny to Mr. Sayas, but it's not funny to the parents whose children have special needs and they don't get the same kind of benefits that Mr. Kalunga. So you can smirk, Mr. Sayas, but I'm sure those parents who have not received the same kind of benefits, they're not smirking. Let it be noted for the record that Mr. Quintanilla is, is, is behaving in a completely uh, inappropriate and ill manner. There is no smirking. There is no There's laughing. A, Excuse me, Mr. Quintanilla. Well, I have let you speak. Well, Excuse me. Mr. Sides is smirking. And, sir. And let's put Mr. the camera Quintanilla. on him. No, it will not be put on him. It will be put on you, sir. When you get the chance, you will ask him the question. I will. It is not today. I will. Please lower your voice and quit yelling, because if you continue to yell, we will end this deposition. You can leave whenever you no, like, well, sir. You're going to treat me with respect. You're gonna, I'm going to treat you with the respect no, that you you're, deserve, you're gonna, sir. You're going to treat me with respect. And you're going to act like an attorney, not like a you gangster. You can leave whenever you'd like, Mr. Well, if you don't want to then go I'm not going to I answer. want their question. What's, what's contratos uh, amigos sweetheart contracts? Why are you using, accusing Mr. Zayas and Mr. Cortez of sweetheart contracts? Well, should we go there, too? I'm asking you the question, Mr. Quintana. Quintana. Okay. This is your form, if you please. If you insist, I'd like, I'd like the jury. Um, for example, the uh, collection contract... Um, that was awarded by the Brownsville Independent School District to collect taxes that are due to it was awarded to a firm called Pena. Is that correct? You can, okay. Mr. Gun now, Pena, do not ask questions. Okay, now we know that that contract was awarded to a firm called, with the name of, I, I, it's not Ruben Pena, so I want to clarify, but it was Pena. And in our 
questions in our, in our interrogatories and in our depositions of Mr. Cortez and Mr. Zayas. Depositions have not been taken of Mr. Cortez well, nor Mr. Zayas, sir. When we take those depositions, That's we'll correct. ask that question. And we will note that that law firm, that law firm that received that contract to collect the taxes for Dallas County is the same law firm that paid for the campaign signs for Mr. Cortez, your client. Now tell me, is that not a sweetheart contract? Is that your basis? What proof do you have, sir? What, what evidence well, do you we'll have Well, we'll present support? that to the jury. No, sir. No, sir. Well, it's part of the request that we've we, had to We you. will present it. We've, we put it in our, if you read our response. We will. That's coming right next. After we this. read your response. It's, we will. It's in there. Good. It's in there in our request for admissions. Would you like me to read the request are, for admissions? Mr. It's Quintanilla, there. You're going to answer my I will question. read the request for admissions. No, you're not, Mr. Quintanilla. That's and it not will what show that in that request for admissions, it asked that question. No, sir. You're not going to read that. That is not part of my question, sir. You are not going to make this into a circus. I'm not making it into a circus. You asked are a you question. Are you You asked me a question about sweetheart contracts. I'm, I'm asking gonna... you to provide me evidence, not to read a request for admission, sir. Well, we're going to bring that evidence. Do you have evidence right now? Oh. Do you have it in front of you? Bring it up. It will be presented in a court of law. That's what we're, That's what it's all Can about. Can we move that's on to the next question? That's then? what the investigation is Absolutely, all about. Absolutely, I agree with you. Can we move on to the next question? Sure. Good. Excellent. You also accused Mr. Zayas, Mr. Colunga, Mr. Cortez, and Mr. Aguilar of abusive legal fees. Could you explain that to the jury? Oh, of course. Good. Please do so. Well, abusive legal fees. Ask Mr. Zayas. No, there's no questions going to be asked. And Mr. ask Zayas. Mr. You Cortez, the and the jury should know that when we refer to abusive legal fees, there is a report. There is a report that we will submit to you, and I will present it as Exhibit A, and, and I'm unfortunate I didn't make a copy. But That's it's not how it works, sir. You need to produce it first to me. Okay. Um, this is the report for the Bronzeville Independent School District. It's an internal audit report. Sir. The internal audit report, Hector Gonzalez, Superintendent of Schools, Margaret Pisano Flores. It says Athletics Department Investigation Part A. It says the results of the investigation repeal, revealed non-compliance with the following district policies and procedures. Purchasing and acquisitions, employee standards of con conduct, employee standards of conduct standard 1.2, is this Assignment a and schedules. This is my copy, but it will we be. We can make a copy right okay, now. Okay, well, if you'd like. Let's go off the record for a second. I'd like to make a copy. Mr. Quintanilla, you have, a few minutes ago, presented us with two documents which we have made copies of, and they are now marked Quintanilla Exhibit Number 8 and Quintanilla Exhibit Number 9. I'm going to tender those to you, and if you just give me one quick second so I make. Which one do you have as the exhibit? I'm get, you're going to get them. You're going to get them. I'm going to about to give them to you. Okay. You have exhibit number eight and exhibit number nine. Now, please, if you could proceed in terms of what the significance of these two documents are. Well, and, well and, let's, and let's go back to the question about abusive legal fees. That's exactly right. I was okay. going to tell you. Let's tie it into that, please. Can you read back the question? I can repeat it. Okay. I can repeat it. In exhibit, Gintani exhibit number seven, you have made an accusation of abusive legal fees against Mr. Zayas, Mr. Colunga, Mr. Cortez, and Mr. Aguilar. And I asked you if you could please explain that to us. And that's when you brought these two documents out. Well, the, um, the report, December 2nd, 2008, September 3rd, 2008, and it's an athletic department investigation part A and it's an athletic department investigation. One report is by Margarita Pisano Flores, the lead internal auditor, and the other one is from Lisa Fausto and Olivia Rodriguez. I will begin reading with the Margarita Pisano report, which was a secondary report that was issued. And so, and this, this report, I'll, I'll go back so that there's a chronology of order. 
Um, the first report was September 3rd, 2008. It was by Lisa Fausto. And it goes on, the following is a summary of the investigation of alleged of allegations of inappropriate professional conduct by Joe Rodriguez, athletic administrator, when he used BISD equipment, vehicles, and personnel for a non-BISD-sponsored event and allowed alcohol at the buses at, at, the, uh, at the event. It goes on to describe the golf tournament, tournament other athletic department issues. It goes into a, a description of all the things that this uh, report investigated. It says, um, after interviewing several employees, it became evident to the investigators that several issues were severe and pervasive. I, I like to repeat that for the jury. After interviewing several employees, it became evident to the investigators that several issues were severe and pervasive in the athletic department as previously mentioned. There were several allegations made about timekeeping violations, uh, at, such as the athletic secretary keeping two separate timesheets, a timesheet the employee signed and a separate timesheet for tracking the hours beyond their assigned shift. So it goes on and, and, and talks in detail about the, the timesheets that obviously it, come, it concludes with falsification and a federal offense. Would you agree that when you falsify timesheets for payment, that's an offense, it's a criminal act? I'm not here to testify. Okay. You are, Mr. Contender. Second part is discrimination and retaliation. Claims of discrimination and retaliation were made against the athletic secretary for distributing overtime unequally, unequally equally, and not assigning overtime as a form of punishment. According to the statements made by the employees, Athletic secretary plays favorites. All overtime is given to a co-worker A. So it goes on to talk about the e unequal distribution of overtime. It goes on to talk about harassment. It says claims of harassment were made against the athletic administrator and co-worker. Several examples of harassment were given. The, it, I'll give you one. It says, hey, what is wrong with you guys? You look stupid. A third employee said the athletic administrator yelled, this guy, get me teed off. Get him out of here. Another employee said the athletic the administrator had a habit of yelling and whistling. And then, no se le quita la maña en los chiflas. And goes on, this guy isn't worth a shit. I'm, again, finally, another employee stated that co-worker A said, this guy isn't worth a shit. Next point, safety concerns. And it goes about the inappropriate uh, actions of the, super, of the athletic director and safety concerns. And it goes about talking, a, a, a was physically assaulted by another maintenance employee during work hours several months. The assault occurred as a result of coworker A verbally abusing another employee. Coworker A reported the assault, the athletic administrator and the athletic secretary the assault was reported after a second administrator was informed. Inappropriate use of funds, personnel, and equipment. So it goes on how this athletic director, under the management and leadership, because this report is already in the possession of your clients, and they have this report in, the, in their presence, and it's very specific and very categorical, and it outlines the, the different violations of this athletic director. It says the etiquette and, and the, the laws that were violated is the code of ethics and standard practices for Texas education, professional ethical conduct practices and performance standards 1.2, standard 1.4, standard 1.6, and standard 1.7. The ed education now not knowingly misappropriate, diverse, or use monies, personal property, or equipment committed to his or her charge for personal gain and advantage. I'm going to read that again so that the jury is not confused and so that they understand it clearly. The educator shall not knowingly misappropriate, divert, or use monies, personnel, property, or equipment committed to his or her charge for personal gain or advantage. The educator shall not use institutional or professional privileges for personal or partisan gain. Standard 1.6, the educator shall not falsify records or direct or coerce others to do so. Standard 1.7, the educator shall comply 
with state regulations, written local school board policies, and other applicable state and federal laws. Mr. Gittania, may I ask I'm you something? I, I know you're, I'm not going okay. to let you finish. We'd be happy to stipulate that whatever this document I, says, it says, and the jury will see it, I promise I, you. I would prefer... Here's my question. Mm -hmm. How does this relate to abusive legal fees? That's I'm what I'm trying I'm to get you to. I'm going to get there. No, but you're going to read every paragraph. I'm just going to read this, and then I'm going to get. I'm going to get there. You, you're asking me a question. I'm going to get there. It says um, CAA local fiscal management goals and objectives, financial ethics, misappropriation of funds, securities, supplies, and other district access, including employee time. So this report goes into great detail Fantastic. about the criminal violations that were conducted by this athletic director. The second report, but before you go okay, to the, second, the report, second report basically confirms and concludes the findings. And the findings say that, and the jury will get to see this, and I won't go into detail because you're right, I will let them go point by point. They find that the conclusions of it is that the personal, that the issues through, identified through this investigation are very critical, and the athletic, athletic administrator's actions violated the following BISD policies, procedures, and regulations. Violated, committed potential criminal activity, violated it. Purchasing and acquisitions, standards of conduct, Employee standard of con the editor shall not knowingly misappropriate, divert, or use monies, personal property, or equipment. The Fair Labor Standards Act prohibits non-exempt employees from working more than 40 hours. Gifts and solicitations, no outside organization of any sort may solicit contributions of any type from students within the schools. And organizations that may, not be, may not use the district's tax identification number. An organization should apply for and receive its tax-exempt status from the IRS. Despite these two reports, your, your, your clients file a lawsuit the voice, against the Attorney the General. Mm -hmm. They file a lawsuit against the Attorney General to suppress these reports, to keep these, these, these reports quiet so that no one would know that Joe Rodriguez and that the athletic department had committed potential criminal wrongdoing. Not only do they spend money to defend this, they hire a second law firm and they spend monies to defend the criminal wrongdoing of an individual rather than going to the district attorney and saying, you know what, Mr. District Attorney, we want you to look at these reports because there are some potential criminal wrongdoing. These are questionable and disturbing uh, uh, results from a, an internal auditor of BISD that claim that there is potential criminal wrongdoing. Thank you. And you know what, members of the jury, these two gentlemen, not once, not once did they go to district attorney, but they spent a quarter of a million dollars or more in defending this lawsuit to suppress. Okay, Mr. Now Mr. tell me if that is not abuse of, of legal fees. My question to you, Mr. Quintana. Yes, we stand by that. Okay, F fantastic, thank you. you. You've absolutely encapsulated that as, as best you could and I understand that, that's fine. L let me ask you this question. You are making you're emphasizing quite a bit about this potential criminal uh, behavior, right? That's right. You would agree with me that anyone who has a criminal background or a criminal um, conviction, that's a bad thing. Wouldn't Absolutely. You? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm big... No, no, excuse me. I'm, I'm going to tell you before you no, go no, no, there. No, 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 no. I, I, I know. Sure. I've been there. I've done Thank that. Thank you. But I'm not getting there yet. Okay. I'm just asking All you, right. you consider that to be a significant issue. Absolutely. When, secondly, when secondly. you're when you're when you have a fiduciary responsibility to protect the the public funds of individuals, as Mr. Sias and Mr. Cortez have, they have a responsibility. My they have a fiduciary and ethical responsibility to report potential criminal wrongdoing. Take it to the district Mr. attorney. Quintanilla. Let him decide if there's any criminal activity. Mr. Quintanilla, they fail, enough. They failed to do enough. that. They enough. failed to do I've that. Given you a lot they of failed to do that. Yes, I've given you have. You Thank rope. you. Enough. 
let's keep move on. Otherwise, we're going to be here until tomorrow. I'll be here until tomorrow. I got so reservations. I want you to slow tomorrow. down and let me ask you the next question. Please. It's very relevant. Yes. I promise you. Okay. You, have you ever heard the right to counsel, the, the constitutional right, right Absolutely. to Absolutely. Okay. You are very familiar with also the judicial process where the people that make the conclusion as to whether someone is guilty or liable is whom, Mr. Quintanilla? Who makes that decision? Well, obviously... No, no. Who is it? Is it? If you know, just give me one short answer, if, if, if you are asking who is responsible for the continuation of employment of the person who no, Mr. Uh, no, no, acted no, 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 this. No, 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 no. Ask, I'm asking you. If you're asking me who is responsible for continuing to keep this gentleman on their payroll uh, despite the findings, uh, and, and, and oh, would see. you, if, if, if you were a prosecutor, or you were, uh, Mr. would you, you judge and jury in this case? No, I'm not. The jury is going to decide this. I'm asking you, would you, do you think that this should have been turned over to the district attorney for Mr. investigation? Quintanilla, I'm asking you questions. And I'm asking you a question. No, sir, you do not get the right to ask Well, I think question. the jury needs to know if, if No, sir, if, that's not the procedure that we follow Well, then in the jury system. will know why, why. This report was never turned over to the district attorney. Mr. Quintanilla, outside of these two reports that you have now produced that you say support your accusation of abusive legal fees, are there any other documents that you have that are in support of any of the accusations made on exhibit number seven, sir? Um, yes, and we will present those. Uh, let, me, let me give you... No, 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 you, well, no, 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 okay. no, no. I'm just asking, are there? Yes, there okay, are. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. And, Let's and go to... No, sir, that's it. And, and, no, and I'm not going to let you... Well, well no. why not? You let us do this one. Let us present those. Because we're going to get to it in the form in which it should be, sir. <laughs> well, you allow, you allow this. Why don't you allow that? Let, let's talk about the... Um, let's talk about legal Off the record, boys. No, we're on the... Off I'll the record. No. Mr. Quintanilla, let me show you what's been marked as defendant counter plaintiff's objection and responses to plaintiff's counter defendant's first set of requests for production and ask you if you've ever seen this document before, sir. Well, I'd like to respond. You, I, I have not answered uh, or you have not accepted my answer on abuse of legal fees. I we would accept like to it. Get, we accept it. That's uh, fine. So you accept can we, it. Can we now go to the next thing? We accept what you've said. I'm not saying it's correct. You accept that, that they're right. That, no, you, you accept, no, I accept it. Well, you right. just said we accept it. Will you accept Mr. my Quintanilla, statement? Let me ask you to look at exhibit number five. Is so this you, yours? Sir, so is it or not? So is you, it, sir? So do you accept? Is it or not? Do sir? you accept the our our? Sir, our, is it or not? Is that your document or not? Sir? I'm asking you a question. No, do you, you accept do our answer to, to the question, question that you, you raised regarding abuse you do not abuse get to ask of legal contract? You do not get. Okay. You don't get to ask me questions. Well, I'm Mr. answering Mr. a Mr. question Quintana, that you gave Exhibit me. Exhibit five. Is that your document? I will sir? answer that question when you when we clarify my answer on abuse of legal. You fees. can clarify what you want, but I don't answer those questions, sir. You answer the questions. That's the nature okay, of the. Okay, so you're basically saying that you accept the, the answer that I gave. No given. one has accepted anything. Well, you sir. just said that on no, the. No, I accept, you accept that. It. That's your answer. Okay, you accepted that. that that's, that's your answer. answer. Okay, so this, so it's on the record that I responded to that question. The next question is Exhibit five. Is that your document? Is that a document that you put together, sir? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go through it if we could. Request for production number one. It says, produce any and all documents supporting your allegation in paragraph two of your response. Sir, your response is, you gave us no documents. Do you have, as you sit here today, do you have any documents that are responsive and in support of your paragraph two of your answer and your counterclaim? Can I just hold on? I'm sorry. Can we go off the record? Sure. Off record. What about on record? Now, you're asking me if is this is my response? Yes, sir. To request for production. I'll read the request for production, right? I read it, but I, you can read it again. It says, want. "Produce any and all documents supporting your claim 
supporting your allegation, paragraph 12 of plaintiff's original response and counterclaim. And my response is, defendant's counterclaim, counterplaintiff objects to this request insofar as it is vague, overly broad, not reasonably, reasonably limited in time and scope, and calls for information that is not relevant and not reasonably calculated to lead to discovery of admissible evidence. And this is my response to their request for protection. I'd like the jury to, to read this. Now this is their response to my request for production, and I would like to read that. And it says, this is your response you know to what, me. This is it. It's over. Let's stop Produce any and all documents supporting your allegation. Place it, objects to this.